so six times. Yeah. Didn't win last year. What's going to give you the edge this year? Uh, last year we had a few problems and we didn't like. Obviously, we didn't ride a lot last year. And this year we've done a few more and we have quite go rock all right round here. So we kind of know the setup and we done the last meeting here a couple of months ago and we've kind of got the bike set up ready so was, hopefully we can just go out and already see hit the ground running. Obviously it's a pretty hot dusty day, it can make a lot of difference with really, it? Yeah it's going to, like you say, it's going to be a hot one but I think as long as we look after our own bodies kind of thing and we should be alright for the day. And uh, do you have like a, a plan or you know, do you sort of go out there and with a rough idea of what you're going to do because obviously it's building up win. to the final. Yeah, yeah like no. Liam just said, go and win, but normally, because it's a dead heat final, as long as you can make that final, it's four laps and anyone can win it. So, But obviously there's a European qualification spot you still got to think about, so you don't want to let your guard down too much. So as long as we make that A final in like the top two positions, that puts us straight through to the European final and then anyone's in that final. And, and how much chance do you get to ride together in a sport like this? Really? We, since before, obviously before COVID, we race nearly every weekend on the broad and over here. So obviously since COVID, we haven't done a great deal. But me and Liam have been riding together nearly ten years now. So it's you it don't you don't lose nothing. So he knows what I want it to do, and I know. I trust him enough to let him do what he wants. Okay, so being on, on um, how, how much trust is there with this young man? Uh, yeah, we've all we've always had trust, and that's that's one of the key things to like a good team. I think if you you've got to be able to trust each other. If you don't trust each other, there's no point in riding. I don't think it's just one of them. And from your point of view, the weather conditions. I mean, obviously, it's slightly different for the rider. How does that affect you, the dust? Or is, it, is it worse coming up? or um, No, not really. It's just, just the same. If you're in the dust, you're in the dust. It's it's getting through to you no matter what. It's I think the best thing is is just make the start, get out front and keep out of the dust. And how, how do sports like this, how are they going to survive where farmers maybe want to not give you their fields and things like that? Do you think it's it needs to adapt and change a little bit? Um, well, if if that happens, then I think there's not what you can do really. It says it in the name, grass track. So <laughs> without a field, it's uh, dead. <laughs> and also, you've got uh, the electric bikes coming through, which is going to be a good while. Again, that's going to change the whole game, isn't it? A bit. Um, well, I'm not really into that. I don't. I've seen a few, and I've ridden a couple of the like bikes now which are electric and yeah it just they are faster but the, you don't have that feel like and the noise and I think that's that's a big thing like especially like with a thousand cc bikes and stuff you, you've got that noise which brings the crowd out and things like that. Well that's what it's about really isn't it and again as a rider uh, the driver that noise of changing must Obviously, the electric's not there, is it? No, because you set a bike up by the noise kind of thing, like you hear a bike. But with changing gear in a car to where it just labours, or if you're not changing gear early, it revs. So I don't see it, it coming into our sport. There's a small window of machines anyway, or brands that do our bikes. So I think we don't, we won't see that. And I think we're always going to hear the thousands make a roaring and then the 500s. That's part of it. Yeah, the noise. The roar, it's... Yeah, you wouldn't go and watch a Formula One race if it was electric, would you? Because you know, all you want to hear is that noise going past you. Well, they, I think they're starting to put engine sounds in it. How pathetic is that? Anyway, chances today, what do you feel? Same as everyone's, mate. Well, everyone's here to win. You, you wouldn't turn up not to win, do you? So, like I say, we'll keep, like, get into that final, and then once you're in that final, anyone can win it. So, I've got confidence in us and the team to do it so there shouldn't be no reason why not. Brilliant. Best of luck. Thank you very much. We'll chat Cheers. to you when you won. Okay Rob, 
nice bright sunny day. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. What's your thoughts? Yeah, hopefully it'll be all right. I mean, the club always do the, the make a real big effort to water it when it's dusty. And unfortunately, last year the, they had two real wet ones. But looks like obviously the, the, their last one was a good, real good meeting. And today probably a bit dusty, but I know for sure they have been out there watering. So hopefully it'll be good. Now, how's your setup? Has it changed, or since your last time you went out? Obviously it has, but um, um, did you get much chance to, to really sort of change it in the? In the well, Terry and Liam, they, they go out for practice and they do what they want to do, but yeah, the bike hasn't really changed from last year. Terry wanted to carry on more or less the same as as it was, um, which was great for me. It wasn't a lot for me to do for the winter months, so, uh, and um, obviously, yeah, he's riding it very, very well between them. Now, obviously, we're used to pretty ropey weather during <laughs> July for some reason, and now we've got, you know, wonderful weather. How does that change your sort of thoughts when you come out and race? Well, it's, it's a difficult one because, yeah, obviously if it was that rock hard and with no water, we'd probably end up with Speedway tyre on the back of the bike because the ground would be really rock hard. But because they obviously got to water it to keep it dusty, uh, or keep the dust down, should I say, um, yeah, it's a difficult one to, to do. Like, you know, you, you probably find where they water it, the boys would be running on the outside of that water where they haven't because uh, obviously that's where they're going to get most grip because... Where it's the rock hard, it makes it so slippery, you know. Have you always grown up around grass, grass tracking? Yeah, I have. I've been at it for years, really, to be fair. My dad was a grass track racer, and um, yeah, I've done a little bit of solo racing. Obviously, when Bob was a solo man, I was a solo guy, and uh, yeah, then I, my dad packed up and I went on to sidecars. Because it's a very family feel, the whole, the whole of it. Yeah, for sure, it really is. You know, we, we do get newcomers come into it, and uh, to be fair, they don't, some do, but there's a lot of them that don't last. You know, they come in, they buy a real good bike, they go good, but they don't last. What's the reasons behind that, do you think? I believe probably family commitments is, is a big one. I mean, my boy raced and, uh, you know, he's doing very, very well. And, um, yeah, obviously, the, as the kids grow up, they got they want to play football, don't they? The girls want to go dancing and, you know, it's, it's a difficult one to... Uh, and it's obviously got more and more expensive as time's gone on, you know, for sure. Can you see see it lasting with things just changing the way they are, whether farmers don't give you fields or electric bikes, all that kind of stuff? I know that sounds a bit negative, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it, has, it has come to that, that it's uh, a lot less meetings to what we, we used to race every week, you know, from sort of Easter right around to the end of October, beginning of November. But that don't happen now, and we, we probably don't do many more and sort of... 10 meetings a year if that that's that's how it's going but saying that you know again people with the fuel prices and everything else that's gone you know not just spectators but obviously people getting to meetings and all the rest of it with fuel costs and everything it's uh, but it will definitely carry on for sure you know it's it's you know i <laughs> we've always gone through the years ago you know you you i suppose you teased owls and Smithy and Roger and Laney and all them boys and then you had John Halsey and Jacko and all them type of boys but there's another load now you know there's another load of good young young guys obviously Terry would be one of them and uh, the Heath boys going really good and young Mark well still young Mark and Tom and people like that there's still some really good riders out there. And it still gives you a thrill coming to these events? Oh yeah for sure you know I, I do the bike Terry turns up um, he loves it, family loves it, so that's, that's good enough for me. Well, that's a positive note. Terry, um, again, slightly same questions, weather? Yeah, it's going to be warm, I know that. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, it's going to be a bit dusty, but yeah, the club, I'm sure, have been doing what they can to yeah, keep that dust down. Yeah, just got to go out and practice, try and practice, and then just go from there, really. And how's your season been to date? Um, yeah, to be fair, pretty good. <laughs> it has. Uh, yeah, I'll just sort of go out and enjoy myself. Yeah, and just sort of like the results of the results. But yeah, it seems to be going pretty well at the minute. And um, today, what um, you're not actually racing for a championship place, are you? Is it, you're kind of the sideshow. Would that be correct? Yeah, we're um, yeah we're the support class. Obviously, like these boys got all the like the five hundreds and that all got their championship. Yeah, we come and sort of a bit of support, just uh, give them a break in between races. Um, but yeah, so today, yeah, obviously, you still want to go out and do your best, but. For me, it'd probably be like trying things out with the bike, you know, being not first year on the handlebars, yeah, I was going to try the bike and see what it can and can't do. So, 
Yeah. So, so how, how's the rest of your season sort of looking out? When's your sort of championship? Uh, that's in two weeks' time, which is at Dig Dog, which is yeah, about a mile down the road. Yeah, so yeah, like I say, today's going to be like a trial thing, ready for that meeting, really. So, yeah, just see how it goes. Go and enjoy yourself. Fantastic. Thank you very much. OK, we're going to start off with, well, going back a bit, to uh, 218 and uh, that final. Can you talk us through it? What do you remember from it? Yeah, no, it was um, obviously the year before I'd won it. It um, got called short due to the rain, so that final was a little bit, there was no final, to be honest with you. And then, obviously, 2018, I think the boys were all throwing their, throwing their bikes at me, trying to win in it, and um, it was literally sort of one of the last bends. I came around with Luke Harris. I just had to send it wide, and luckily enough, there was enough grip to get me past him, and then, yeah, went over the checkered flag, and since then, it was just been a blur, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, you went on 219 and won. Yeah, that was another good final. They all wanted it again, and um, I wanted it a bit more. Obviously, trying to win it three years in a row was um, the plan, and luckily enough, that final was still another hard final. I had Charlie Brooks and um, Jake Mulford chucking their bikes at me too, and luckily enough, I came out on the one bend and sort of started to pull away. And um, yeah, since then, it's been been sort of a quiet year with obviously COVID, and then it's obviously another COVID year. So um, hopefully, this this year, I can um, win it again. How psyched up were you once COVID had sort of gone? I know it's not totally gone, but, you know, coming back last year, how, how important was that to get back in the saddle? Yeah, it was, um, last year was a bit of a hard year for me. I, I had a shoulder operation during the year, so literally came back probably about a month before and had the uh, British Championships and thinking my shoulder would be all right, but just physically and mentally, I don't think I was in the right sort of place to try challenging for it. Um, I got on the podium, I think I finished third in the end, but... No, obviously coming back from a shoulder injury and trying to trying to win a title is not the not the best. So I've had the whole of the year off now, try and um, build the shoulder up, and it's probably best it's ever been. So this is the sort of year that I can um, give it a proper good go again. Weather weather wise, do you prefer racing when it's wet? Today is obviously going to be one of the probably hottest day of the year. Yeah. What do you prefer? Is there a preference, and are you better in either of them? Um, I don't mind whichever really. I do like riding in the wet. It's a bit more fun. You can sort of ride the bike a bit, throw it around a bit more, and it turns easier. But to be honest, everyone's got to ride whichever weather conditions there are. So whichever one it is, it's everyone's to go for. But no, today hopefully it's we've got quite good shade here, so hopefully I can stay cool, stay calm, and um, hopefully the track doesn't change and get too dusty. And looking forward to today, what's your sort of race plan, so to speak? Um, I think it's just enough points just to get into the final. And, um, yeah, it's all down to that last final in the end, so hopefully make the best start and pull away. I don't want to be fighting again like I was last time, but I know the boys will be chucking everything at it. And, um, no, just hopefully make that gate and just keep it keep it wound on. And to win a game for the sixth time, would it be? Uh, it would be the fourth time in the Probably. 250s, but I have won it a couple of times in the other youth classes. But when you get to the adults, it's a bit more important because... You're up against men then, sort of thing. But no, hopefully, yeah, if I win it today, it'll be the fourth time. And that's, that's the plan. I've come up here to win it, so can't go home empty-handed. And just for a record, where, where are you based? Exeter, so it's oh, about, so it's yeah, a bit yeah, a bit about four, four and a half hours to here. So it's not not on the doorstep, so it's a long way to come. But that's why that's why we want to win it. But the trip would be better going home with a title there. Yeah, it? it would be. It wouldn't be a nice trip home with Dad <laughs> trying to... Say, oh, why don't you win it? So, <laughs> I think for both of us, it'd be nice just to win it. Obviously, having all the crap with all my shoulder and then COVID and stuff, it'd be nice to sort of finish finish this year on a high sort of thing. Not obviously it's still mid season, but it'd be nice to sort of finish it off with a with a win today. Fantastic, best of luck. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks for your time. Which is your that, that dodgy that, one? That's the dodgy that's one. one. <laughs> <laughs> How's your season been going so far? Oh uh, yeah, we've had a pretty good season. Um, few wins, few seconds, few podiums and yeah, it's going pretty well. Bike seems to be doing what, what we want it to do. So yeah, we're pretty happy we're, where we are and we just hope it's going to be a good day. Now you've been racing four seasons? About about. four seasons, yeah. We did one season when we first started. We only did a few meetings then just to sort of click together and then we went at it. I think it's about 2018. Yeah. We really went for it and yeah, haven't looked back since. Obviously, the old man retired then to let us pursue our dreams. So then you had COVID. How did that affect things apart from not racing? Yeah, well, that was a it was a long time off. Felt like years, and then to come back and everything was still a bit hot and cold when we come back. Like we thought we could maybe do two meetings, and then they say, "Oh, lockdown again and whatever." But no, it's been pretty good. So we're happy where we are. Uh, and today, um, how, how's it looking for you guys? Uh, warm. Uh, real warm. Um, 
yeah, obviously, like the riders that are out here today are the best in the country. Um, we're all here to win, aren't we? And we just got to go for it, and best man wins, isn't it? Do you have a race strategy, or do you just go out the first and just have a feel of it, or, or do you just sort of say, Fly what out. the hell, we'll go for yeah. it? Yeah, flat out. You can say what you want, can't you, at the start of the day, but once you're on the track, you don't know what's going to happen, do you? Everyone's does different things. You can say, oh, I'm going to go and do this and I'm going to go and do that, but you don't know, do you? Because everything's different once you hit that top corner. Everyone goes in your way and then if you've made a strategy, it's gone out the window, isn't it? So. And how is the dust going to affect you perhaps today? Um, hopefully not too bad because we'll be at the front, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll see. That's strategy. We'll see. No, everyone's got to ride them, so you've just got to bring your A game. And, Hope for the best, really. Um, get out the gate. Get out the <laughs> gate, which is something we've struggled with, but um, something we're. So talk us how hard is it getting out of the gate? You know that that that. It's probably second before. Probably the most frustrating thing in the world because you can see other people, like your main competitors, go, and then you're not with them. So it takes that. It puts that extra bit on it. They, obviously, races can be won or lost off the gate. So um, yeah, it's pretty funny when he gets wound up, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it does make a difference. Does he ride better wound up? Yes, 100%. Um, you could just feel it, but I know. Obviously, riding with him for a few years now, that what he's going to do, and I know where I need to be to make his life easier. So yeah. How much telepathic is there between you two? I mean, I, you know, I don't sort of my hands in front of that. But um, you, um, you know, how, how do you know what he's going to do, and vice versa? A lot. I've grown up with him. Obviously, with dad racing, we've known each other the best part of 15 years, and obviously, only being. 24 and 22, we've, we've spent a lot of time together, so it's just something that you click into. I've ridden with other people, but there's nothing nothing better than having that consistency of someone you know what they're going to do and how to read them and how to make their life easier by doing what he wants to do. So yeah. It does seem there is a grass track family, and you are a grass track family in many different ways. Um, how do you sort of... When you talk to friends, do you mainly talk about grass tracking, or I mean, uh, you know, football seems to be the prevalent thing, certainly in Wales and, and wherever. Yeah, a no, lot no football in this camp. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people know what we do. Obviously, I've, we, we don't live too far apart, but in the off season, we spend a lot of time with each other, um, like a big family, really. Probably seeing more than my own family, <laughs> to be fair. But uh, but no, a lot of people know what we do, and obviously, it spikes an in interest, and which is what we want. So yeah. And if you win today, what do it mean to you guys? A lot really, we come second last year, uh, made that hard work <laughs> by missing the gate, but um, yeah, I mean a lot, obviously with um, with Dad, Dad racing before and he's had a chance of going close, but to one-up him would probably be better. And it'd be a, a good journey back to Wales, wouldn't it? Oh, I assume yeah. you live in Wales. <laughs> yeah, 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 more or less, on the borders. Um, yeah, it just mean the world, world to us really, you know, the, the morale will be so happy going back and you'd actually want to go to work the next morning, wouldn't you? <laughs> Okay, um, current champions. Yep. How's it looking for to, today, basically? Oh, it's looking good, really. I mean, obviously, the uh, last year's championship was at the end of September, and we're in July now. So we've, you know, we, we are the current champions, but it's not even been a year. So, uh, but that's the way it goes. Um, but we're looking, you know, we'd like to uh, have another one. Um, track looks good. Event looks good. Um, we're looking forward to it. Weather-wise, obviously, hot and dusty. Like it? Don't like it? Well, it's not really a problem for us uh, normally. <laughs> okay, let's not go to add normally. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you know, fortunately, we we tend to be making the dust and not following it, so that that's uh, you know, it's all right for us, I guess. But you know, safety is a big, important part of racing, um, and everyone's involved in. You know, safe racing involves everybody, so we've got to make sure that it's okay, and, and hopefully the club can put enough water on, and you know, without making it too slimy and slippery, you know, it's a fine line to get it right. I mean, but this club have got enough experience to do that. You just come back from Marmont, would that be correct? Um, how did you do out there? How's your? Uh, well, we've had a couple of meetings in France, so we uh, we went to France probably about uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. We drove down, left the van down, and we did the first meeting. We won the first meeting, flew home, and then flew back to France on Tuesday, race Wednesday night. Um, we had a good night. It didn't quite go our way. We had a few problems at the in the final, and we ended up getting uh, disqualified on the two-minute rule, which which is really disappointing, but that's part of racing. Um, 
so yeah, we've come back, got home Thursday night, washed the bikes Thursday night, prepped them Friday, and we're here now. So, for any kind of person like me, what's the two minute rule? Uh, when you're at some of the big international meetings, um, they open the, the pit gate onto the track because it's, it's a boarded stadium event uh, and there's a two minute timer. And because we were there as a support class for an FIM solo event, that obviously they had a two minute timer and they were using it. Um, so we, we were ready on the start within the two minutes, um, but the start marshal didn't really like our position where we were. Uh, he asked us to move which we did, and then once we moved, the referee then excluded us on the two minutes. So it was a ball a bit controversial, um, but you know, luckily for the French, the French won, so. <laughs> How different is it racing in Europe to the UK? Um, well, I mean, f for us, to, to go to these stadium tracks, I mean, look, I mean, Marmon, there was five, 6,000 people. It starts at half nine at night. It's a massive party atmosphere. It finished at half one in the morning. There's fireworks, there's big crowds. There's, there's the infrastructure that they've got, you know, showers and toilets and there's a clubhouse and a room and, you know, you're in a stadium and it's that buzz is very rarely replicated in England because at the end of the day we're in a farmer's field. You know, next week there'll be sheep on this field and there's there's only so much they can do on a temporary temporary venue. Um, but that that you know, it's almost like a bit of a circus show. You know, we go to that meeting and we do all that down there, and then the next week we're in Germany doing it somewhere else, or we're in Holland. So. You know, it is, it, is, it is a good buzz and, you, you know, they want you to be there, you're invited to be there, they're paying you to be there and you go in there and ride in your motorbike, which you love to do as well. So, yeah, it, it doesn't really compare, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a big enough draw to make us do 1,500 mile, 2,000 mile in the van every weekend. So that, is, that tells its own story. Now, you've got a bit of a dodgy knee. Tell us about this. Uh... It goes back to Herxheim. We um, we were riding at Herxheim, um, started the final. Um, the final got restarted. Um, I got off the bike at the pit gate, and basically my knee just clicked. Um, I still don't know what's what's actually happened with it. Um, so that was back in May. Um, it gets better if I don't ride a little, um, but then it can click out very quickly and then pop back in. It's just in and out. So it's. It's, it's okay while I'm riding the bike. It's it's a little bit tougher walking if it clicks out. So obviously it's very dry, dusty here today. Yep. Would it be better if it had been a little bit wet, sodden? No, to be honest, it doesn't make any any difference from my riding style. Um, you know whether it's whether it's wet or dry, I still kind of normally ride the, the same way. Um, you know, it just depends on on weight distribution and getting my head even further over or or not, as the case may be. Just getting some drive on the back wheel. Um, but yeah, my, my knee, it doesn't affect, you know, anything on the bike. Looking, <laughs> looking at the uh, opposition today, who are you slightly wary of, perhaps, if that's the right uh, word? Everybody, really. On the, on the day, everybody's, um, everybody's good enough. Um, um, especially within our class, you know, it's, this is a very, very close class. And, uh, you know, literally anyone can pop out of a start, you know, um, and, and win a race. You know, you could have two people that... I probably, you know, might be the the better ones out of a out of a group, go into the corner very hard. The guy in third comes around the inside and take takes the win. You know, so it's it is very very tight. Um, the competition will be really really tough. Um, I mean, for for us as a class, it's also very important because this event is also used as a, a kind of a gradings event for next year's uh, European Championship. So uh, the point scoring after after the heats. Then they they sort of uh, have a classification. That's that's the what's used for Europe. Um, and then the final at the end of the day is a, you know is a four lap dash to be the champion. You know so but but that's kind of with Europe out not in that equation. That makes you know that that final is a bit more um, ruthless. I suppose could be ruthless. I don't know. It's a bit more. There's all that's on it is to be the champion. You know, so you're not going to worry about placing. It's just about winning, and uh, that that makes it exciting as well. Does any other sport come close to this, in your opinion? 
Um, it's a tricky question. Yeah. I, I've done lots of I've done lots of different sports, but they've funnily enough they've all involved wheels, <laughs> you know, and, and racing. I, you know, I, personally, I I can't get. You know, I watch motocross on telly, and I, I get bored very very quickly. I watch MotoGP, and I can't really watch it. I get bored. I fall asleep watching Formula One. You know, I love motorsport, but nothing has got the thrill and excitement as a four lap. Sprint, really? Yeah, it, it's it's an explosion of energy. It's an explosion of energy within the bikes. It's an explosion of energy with us, and it's it's done and dusted. You know, it, it, that kind of action is very rarely seen. You know, with a MotoGP race, you know, the last three or four laps are pretty good, but the the previous twenty, uh, they're just jostling for position. It's a bit like, you know, that when they race the bicycles on the velodrome, you know, they spend twenty laps doing you know just going slow and then the last lap's a sprint the well they might as well only do one lap you know what i mean it's it's a bit crazy whereas with us it's a sprint from start to finish it's a sprint and and especially with this european points thing it means that you can't sandbag you can't have one easy ride every every point you know we're racing for every point all day long and then once all them points are done then we're racing for the for the championship so it's it's quite uh a mental stressful scenario um, but you know once you get one race out of the way you then focus on the next one and the next one final question um, why don't you think it has really taken off as a tv sport why aren't you big stars is what i'm trying to say well i think i i've got a, I, personally i think the product the product of our sport is is mega it's absolutely okay. you know there's overtaking there's there's drama there's accidents there's Noise, there's yeah. blood and sweat which is what you know the the you know the the crowd want you know um i just think you know and and the, the you know the powers that be would hate me for saying this i just think it's been poorly represented um you know, speedways always sort of took the limelight, whereas I think that you know, as a as a as a sport, as a value sport for the paying customer, you know, they've, they people can come here and they've got 50 races and spend the whole day here. You go to a speedo meeting, you pay more money. It's an hour and a half, and you go home. You have 15 races, and they're pretty boring races anyway. You know, you've got all sorts going on here. I, I can't answer why it's not where it should be, but it's a shame that it isn't. You know, and that's honestly speaking. I agree. Gents, have a really good day. Thank you. We'll talk to you a bit later. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Bob. Thanks for your time. Bye. Okay, um, well, off the back of Marmont, you've, you've come here. Uh, tell us first of all about Marmont. How did we go? Uh, Marmont, the track's great. Love it there. I'm fortunate if I've ridden there a few, quite a few times over the years and won a few different meetings and events stuff over there. Um, but the meeting itself, it's started off okay i won my first heat and then we started to get some electrical problems with coil problems um, because at that level grand prix level you have to run a uh, rev limiter coils and long story short the bikes weren't running right and in the end we found it was plug plugs problems with the um, the coils but unfortunately no one really wants to help you at that at that standard so we we had to learn for ourselves um so yeah something we've learned we know we know what to not do next time but it ruined my meeting over there, really. So I've come back from there a little bit down in the dumps, really. So hopefully today we can get things going. We have a good race, and there's some good guys here today. The track looks brilliant. The guys have done a really good job, and I'm looking forward to getting out there and mixing it with the boys. And the weather's obviously been desperately hot. Yeah, it was hot in France, mate. Warmer than this. It? it was over 40 oh, degrees. Tired. Yeah, odd 40 degrees down there. And yeah. Not really Yorkshire weather, is it this one? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. We we, we have occasionally had it hot. hot. Back, well, a long time ago. Yeah, it's um, it's nice. It's a bit warm for wearing Kevlar's and racing in, but it's the same for everyone. So we all go out there and race and have fun, and hopefully we drink water and deal with it all right. So uh, what's your sort of race strategy if you're, if you're allowed to do it? My strategy is drop the clutch there and full gas around there. That's kind of the strategy. Um, Strategy-wise, realistically, um, it's try and be at the top, the, the top end of every race, and I think it's a straight final today, so make the final, then in the final, everything hopefully will come together and get out the start and go. Is there anyone that you're not particularly looking forward to racing? Everyone. I'm not, no, <laughs> every, I wish everyone just went home and left it to me, but now there's obviously some very good riders, 
Um, I don't ride the 350 very often at all, I'll hold my hand up to that. But we managed to win it last year, so um, I've come here today, but there's Paul Hurry, he's a 500 good rider, Andy Whittaker, you've got the Fen Smiths, you've got um, Tom Perry, there's some very, Tony Atkin, you've got some very good names who are here to, to compete again, so it's going to be a tough meeting. There's also people like um, Paul who ride regularly and free for regular riders that will, will cause uh, a bit of trouble in the mix as well. So it's going to be entertaining, good for the crowd and hard work for me, I think. Final question, was it more in better to win first time or wait 19 years and win the second time? It was great to win first time because I was only young at the time and, and yeah, winning it was, was fantastic, but then to win it Last year at 39, I, I was like, yeah, well, actually, an older boy can still win it as well. So, yeah, it, it was. It, it's always good to win first time, and it's always good to keep winning. So, yeah, winning it again was, was great. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, we're just going to take you back to last year. Yeah. When you won. Talk us through it. What was going through your mind? Oh, man. I mean, come off that gate. Um, first corner, come in there and fourth. I, my honest thought was Rob was in front and I thought it's in the back for him. I've just got to push as hard as I can and get the best result as I can. Um, he unfortunately lost the chain. Uh, Will dropped into first. We moved up into second and I just, yeah, hounded him. Just badgered him, badgered him, badgered him. He did everything spot on. And yeah, just come out to that last corner and just picked up that inside line and had the drive and we managed to just nick it over the line. Happy as Larry? Oh, unbelievably happy. I mean, it's been something that I've dreamt of doing with my, with, my, with my father for many years. Unfortunately, we never got that chance. But yeah, to do it uh, and for us to do it together, massive, massively proud, massively. So looking forward to today, weather conditions, how that is going to affect things for you? Oh, I mean, massively, it's going to be important to make sure the bike stays cool and we don't overheat. Make sure we keep ourselves cool as well, you know, because the bike can go as, as much as it wants to, but if we're not prepared, then nothing happens, you know? And who you, who's out there you fear maybe? Is there is there many of them or is it all of them? From 1 to 12, everyone's everyone's competitive. From 1 to 12, anybody. It really could be anyone. We're all so fast at the moment, such a competitive class. It could all, it, you, I really couldn't put a name down. I really couldn't. And to win it the second time together, how would that feel? Oh my God, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do. Really don't know. Don't know, what would you do? Didn't know much from you, young man. <laughs> What's it like driving with this guy? Yeah, he's, uh, he's learnt a lot in a very short space of time. Obviously, he's been on with his dad for a long time, and they've had a, a good run of success on the bike. Uh, Alex has taken it over and has done phenomenally well in a short space of time. Coming through from our first year where it was, what, is it going to stay on three wheels yeah. or are we yeah. going to end up in a big heat to winning a British title? So, yeah. Couldn't ask us for a better driver. How important is it to gel as a team? Oh, well, you can't have one without the other. So uh, if you're not in sync, then you're not going to be going as fast as you can. Do you ever do like transfers? Is there any like, you know, he's a good passenger yeah. and, you know, is there any nicking uh, a play? It's, it's, it's just this problem we, we have to get over, but I uh, uh, didn't uh, like the sack. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I wouldn't ride with anybody else. I ride with a 500 sidecar with Dan and a left hand sidecar with Alex, so I wouldn't ride with anybody so you else. you both come through your parents doing it, basically, your dads? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, my dad, my dad would drive when he was 68. Um, he started racing when he was 14. So he's got a wealth of experience, you know. What he doesn't know about a sidecar probably ain't even worth knowing. So yeah, I, I'm very, very fortunate to have him, you know, supporting us and the rest of the team, Andy, Jamie especially, doing all the mechanical and engineering work. We, we couldn't do it without them. We couldn't. Well, good luck. Enjoy the day. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Cheers. Hope you retain your time. Thank you, Bob.
racing, there is no warning. You will be excluded if you take flags out. There's plenty of room down that far end, um, and it, you just do not need to come in that tight. You've all read the regs, so you know what you're racing for today. It's the British Championship. So I don't want anybody taking flags out left, right, and center and gaining positions left, right, and center and not doing it. If, on the straight here for argument's sake, you're racing and you get pushed out, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. But if you just go out there and take five or six places, there will be no docking places, there will be nothing. There will be short, a straight exclusion today. Being a British Championship round as well, you all know the rules about the start. He won't. Right, you all know the rules on starts today. If you touch them or you break them, you're right. That is a straight excuse. And there is no, normally, if I'm at an open centre side, so tap me on the shoulder and say, don't do it again. That doesn't happen today. You touch or break the tapes you're sent straight back to the pit, so that's one ride you've just lost. Is green light or just... There isn't normally a flag. flag. There is... Yeah, there is a green flag here. Oh, sorry, a green light here. Yeah. Yeah, there should be a green light here. So when you go to the line, obviously that green light will come on. When that comes on, you'll be under starter's orders and tapes can go anyone after that. Um, 500 sidecar riders, you know your points count up to the semis and then that just stops. That's then purely for day. The points, the heat points are what will get you into Europe next year. Um, everybody else, the finals are all sudden death today. So when you make it into the final, the first one across the line is the British champion. Has anybody got any questions? At the moment, sponsored by British Event Catering, we have got race number one coming to the line, and we have got the reigning champion on gate number one in the four off. It's Gordon and Paul Smith, Simon Beard, and Shane Freeman occupy gate number two. Gate number three is Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. Then we've got Rachel Cox and Scott Guthridge, James Hogg and Scott Goodwin, and on the outside, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. So, race number one is on the line, ready to go. I can see the starters ready. Takes up, away they go, and somebody off of gate five goes very high off the start, but it's Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith to see. Simon Beard and Shane Freeman are second, but he's being attacked on the outside by Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett, who go right round the outside of Simon Beard. And it's Mitch Goddard who leads then. Sean Hughes in that second. Simon Beard attacking Sean Hughes again on that pit corner. He's tried to go up the inside. Sean Hughes is occupied a wide line as he goes round that top. Sean Hughes, who looks very fast in that second place. Simon Beard in third. James Hogg is fourth. White and fifth, and Rachel Cox at the back at the moment. So things have started to spread out a little bit now as they go back down this back straight. Which better than Paul Smith? So one more lap, Sean Hughes, he does look fast in that second place. He looks like he's getting a bit closer to Mitch Godden, but I think Mitch godden has got things under control here. Lightning fast start for the Raiders. Okay, well, Sean Hughes the line. Incredibly close to the line. Problems, I'm sure, for Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. 
So what happened to Mitch Godden there? So the results of race number one, the 500 sidecar, sponsored by British Event Catering. It was a win for number 77, Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. Second place, number nine, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Third place, number four, Simon Beard and Shane Freeman. Fourth place, number 73, James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. Fifth place, number 92, Paul Whiteman and Richard Webb. And sixth place, number 13, Rachel Cox and Scott Guthridge. The winning time, 1 minute 26.66. 1 minute 26.66. So that'll be an interesting one to keep our eyes on for the rest of the day. So Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett with a fine win there right at the end. I think they were fourth at one point in that race. And to have a win there is very good for them. So race two, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. And we have got no Natasha Bartlett and Kira Southgate in gate two this time. But we have got Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. Gate one, Jake Gearing and Luke Russell in gate three. Jordan Smith and Joe Page will be in gate four. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown in gate five. And Richard Jenner and Michael Chittenden on gate six. So race two, Jumping Monkeys Inflatable sponsors the Fire of Side Cars. Who is going to be able to match Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett with that seven point maximum in the opening ride? Away we go, and Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown have made a good start. Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins off in gate one. Third place to go to the turn, but a good start from Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. They lead as they come around this turn. Turning the bike hard as they come out of that corner. Jordan Smith has got himself into that fourth place ahead of Jake Gearing. Now Richard Jenner is all over the back of Dan Berwick for that second place at the moment. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown have checked out here. They have Once again, he's hit that corner very quickly in that third place. So, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. I can see Richard Jenner, he's turned hard coming off of this corner, coming towards us, and that has dropped him back a little bit into that third place. So, we are all a little bit... By going through the card here, and at the moment they are looking very, very quickly. Interesting to compare the times of Josh Goodwin and Sean Hughes in a moment too. Dan Berwick well now with the in that third. So the check is And the Brown they get their campaign underway. Better points for them. Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins do pick up that second ahead of Richard Jenner and Michael Chittenden. Jordan Smith. And Joe Page four, and it's Jake Gehring and Luke Russell finishing fifth. So the results of race two, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. It was a win for number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Second place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. Third place, number 87, Richard Jenner and Michael Chittenden. Fourth place, number 842, Jordan Smith and Joe Page. And fifth place, number 23, Jake Gehring. And Luke Russell. And the winning time? 1.24 exactly. 1.24.00. So considerably faster than the first heat. But of course we do have to bear in mind the track will be getting drier as well. But Josh and Liam looking incredibly quick in race number two. Race three is on the line. It is the 250 solo sponsored by Bake by Day in Headcorn. And it's the first race of this 250 competition. And it looks like the riders are all ready to start this race. Take it up, away we go. And it's Luke Harris and Henry Atkins that have made the best starts. Oh. Ben Orsley in third place, head of Mark Wilkes in fourth. So Henry Atkins comes round the turn. He looks very, very quick as he comes past us. Henry Atkins leads, Luke Harris second, Ben Orsley's in that third. Mark Wilkes is fourth ahead of Vinnie Smith. And Gary Cook in that sixth place at the moment. He's an exceptional rider, both on the grass and the speedway. We're dead pleased to see him here. 
this afternoon. He's a three times 250 champion. And he's certainly with this form. He wouldn't come to that. Well, he is looking very, very fast. And he looks comfortable in that third place. He's returned the other two. 500 side cars for him. Mark Woods is starting to make some ground on Ben Ilsley. So round the final turn, for the final time. This is an excellent start for the man from Exeter, Henry Atkins. He takes the win. Third place at the moment is Ben Ilsley. He looks like he's going to pick up that third quite comfortably ahead of Mark Woods. And Gary Cook. So the results of race three, sponsored by Beg My Day Headcorn. It was a win for number 29, Henry Atkins. Second place, number 26, Luke Harris. Third place, number eight, Ben Ilsley. Fourth place, number 24, Mark Woods. Fifth place, number 27, Vinnie Smith. Sixth place, number six, Gary Cook. And seventh place, number three, Lee Bassett. The winning time, 1 minute 20.35, 1 minute 20.35, so a good start for Henry Atkins in race number 3. Race 4 is now coming to the line, sponsored by Clive Salmon, and it is another 250 solo race. There will be 3 heats of 250 solos, this is the second of the 3, and the reigning champion comes out against 4, Jake Holford. Got Aiden Arthur, David Knowles, Chris Mackin, Carl Beddingfield, Chris Steele, and Luke Tuck all up against the here. Trying to make sure that he doesn't defend this title. So it takes up, away we go, and it is David Knowles that's made a great start. David Knowles. Third, Jake Mulford in fourth at the moment. So it is David Knowles who has won this British title before, who leads. Aiden Arthur's going very, very wide. Does manage to stay within the constraints of the circuit. But David Knowles has stolen a march here. He's away, but Jake Mulford is now in that second place and he's working his way through. He's now chasing off. David Knowles on that second place. Jake Mulford on a speedway engine machine and Jake Mulford is much, much quicker in the middle of the corner. So back into the big corner there. Jake Mulford, he goes round the outside of David Knowles. You can see the speed of that machine, but Knowles is very quick in the straights. David Knowles is not letting Jake Mulford away, but now Jake Mulford is quite down on the But he starts to make a little bit of ground on David Knowles. And I think that Mulford will be gone from here, but that was a good challenge from David Knowles for a couple of laps. But you can see his speed. They are MNG. He's going to breathe the victory here. Mark will take the win. David Knowles. Third place will be Chris Still. Ahead of Aiden Arthur in fourth. Fifth place will be Carl Beddingfield. Chris Mackett will finish sixth, number 68. And seventh place is Luke Tuck, number 89. So the results of race four, sponsored by Clive Salmon. It was a win for number 72, Jake Mulford. Second place, number 64, David Knowles. Third place, number 76, Chris Still. Fourth place, number 60, Aidan Arthur. Fifth place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. Sixth place, number 68, Chris Mackett. And seventh place, number 89, Luke Tuck. And the winning time... 122.78, 1 minute 22.78, so considerably slower than Henry Atkins, although Jake did have to make an awful lot of ground up there. I think he was fifth going into that first corner. So race five, the third of our 250 heats, sponsored by Sweet Treats. And we have got Russell Little, Cameron Taylor, Richie Knight, Jordan Derrick, Graham Thomas, Rob Mia, and no Paul Dufty off of gate seven, so we should have Six riders only over there on the start, that is how many I can see. So it takes up on race number five and Cameron Taylor lifts the machine in the air and it is Cameron Taylor. He's overtaken by Rob Mir, but Rob Mir followed by Cameron Taylor. This could be a 
Good challenge here for Cameron Taylor. Mere leads, Taylor second. Graham Thomas has got himself into that third place. It's Russell Little in fourth place at the moment. So Rob Mir looking very, very quick at the front. What can Cameron Taylor do? how stylish she is as he comes round this turn, number 500, Rob Mir, doing everything he can to try and stay within the constraints of the circuit. So Cameron Taylor, no answer to the speed of Rob Mir. Looking good here, he's got one more lap to go. And he is not looking challenged at all here. Graham Thomas in that third place looking good ahead of Russell Little, who is being hounded by Richie Lowe. So late on into this race. Russell Little behind the back of his head in that fourth place. Built up ahead of steam behind him. And there's North Cameron Taylor and Graham Thomas in that third. I'm keeping an eye on this fourth and fifth because Russell Little and Richie Knight are battling to the line. It looks like Russell Little's just about going to cling on. It's incredibly close. Well, that was very, very close at the end there. So we just heard from the clerk of the course a change to the results. In fourth place in race five was not number 229. It was, in fact, number 91, Russell Little. Fifth place was number 229, Richie Knight. And sixth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. The winning time... 1 minute 20.31, 1 minute 20.31, so four hundredths of a second difference between Rob Mir and Henry Atkins. That's going to get very interesting later. So the reason why the change, Richie Knight did come over the line just ahead of Russell Little, but those of you on this side will have seen that Richie went past on the outside of the circuit. He went round the outside of Russell Little as he come past us off the racing circuit. So rather than exclude him completely, the clerk of the course at his discretion has decided to swap the results back over. So fourth place 91, fifth place 229. And we move to the left-hand sidecar class who start their event here at race number six. So coming to the line in this race six is uh, Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. Will is a three times British champion. And he is coming onto the line in gate number one this time. Alex Bowman and Mark Hopkins are the reigning British champions. They come out of gate two. Then we've got Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. They're the 2019 British champions. Tony and Tom Penfold in gate five. They are, well, Tony is two times British champion as well. And Joe and Jordan Holland. Up with this left hand sidecar class, and it's an even break from the middle. It's Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. <laughs> Alex Bowman's in that third place, and Will Penfold has missed the start, so he's got a lot of work to do here from the back. So, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish looking good here. Tony Penfold pushing Will Penfold wide on this turn, but at the front, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish looking good here. They did look very quick in practice. Third place. For him, Tony Penfold's now mounting a challenge on Joe Holland as they go into that turn. He's going to go wide, but that's allowed Will Penfold to have a look up the inside of him. So, the first three here are clear, but we've got action at the back as Will Penfold tries to make up for that poor start. Joe Pen Joe Holland has got Penfold over the back of him. Involved in this battle at the back. So the last lap flag is made ready for Will Pease, but I think we need to keep our eyes on this battle for fourth, the third, fourth, fifth and sixth, because they are all very close together. Tony Penfold now loses out. He now goes into sixth as Will Penfold is elevated to fifth. Now Will's let them all back past it again and he tries to switch back around the outside. Will Penfold's gone into the top corner very, very quickly as he tries to go round Joe, Joe Holland. Will Heath takes the win ahead of Josh Penfold. It's very close to fourth, fifth and sixth. Completely wide for Will Penfold. A great ride for him. I thought he was going out here for a moment. 
So brilliant racing, and an outfit's overturned as they've gone towards the pits. Not sure what's gone on there. Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds quickly up on their feet. But I don't know if something's broken on the machine there, but Will Penfold not happy with things at all there. So already. So just confirming the uh, results of race six, there was a little bit of uh, conversation going on. One of the outfits coming very, very wide a couple of times here. But the results of race six, it was a win for number 18, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. Second place, number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Third place, number seven, Alex Bauman and Mark Hopkins. Fourth place, number 27, Joe Holland and Jordan Holland. And fifth place, number 25, Tony Penfold and Tom Penfold. The winner's time, 135.25, 135.25. And I'm afraid to say that outfit number two was excluded for running outside the flags consistently and gaining an advantage. So we've got race number seven coming onto the line here. And we have got Danny and Harry Hill off of gate number one, Michael and Tim Phillips off of gate two, Tommy Penfold and Will Naden off of gate three, Billy Penfold and Richard Webb. Gate four, Steve North and Steve North Jr. Gate five, and we've got Martin Cuff and Colin Clark off gate six. So Martin Cuff, of course, he is the five times British champion. And nobody's won it as many times as him. Could he get things going here? with a win. So, take that one to the And Harry will be leading to that first turn. Michael Phillips is in that second. Martin Cuff's now going to try and come round the outside of Michael Phillips. It gets very narrow as they come off the turn. Very narrow indeed, but it's Harry Hill. Danny Hill and Harry Hill who lead. And they've gone a little bit wide into that turn and that has allowed Michael Phillips on terms of them a little bit in the middle of the corner, but I think that outside line is very good. Very quick up the banking. So, Danny Hill leading the way. One of the youngsters of this sport who is tipped for good things. Martin Cuff is now getting on terms with Michael Phillips for that second and third place. Martin Cuff now goes wide into that turn. Michael Phillips. Michael Phillips has seen him and he's just back on the bar a little bit. One more lap to go there for Danny Hill. Martin Cuff's very wide coming past us. Looking for speed. So Michael Phillips is back. He's got Martin Cuff to go. Perhaps trying to think about where he's going to attack the next turn. No doubt about the winner in the form of Danny Hill. Michael Phillips finishes second. Martin Cuff finishes third. So the results of race seven, it was a win for number 124, Danny Hill and Harry Hill. Second place, number 98, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. Third place, number 128, Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Fourth place, number 96, Tommy Penfold and William Naden. Fifth place, number 125, Billy Penfold and Richard Webb. And sixth place, number 193, Steve North and Steve North Jr., the winning time, 135.44, 135.44. So, race eight now comes to the line, which is the 350 solos.
Rose takes up on race eight as we get the 350 competition underway. It's an even race. Even the turn. Just come around that first corner, then it is Paul Cooper, number 11, who leads. He's running out wide. He's had to stop the machine to stop himself running out of room. Andrew Whitaker has now got back on terms of him. So Cooper ahead of Andrew Whitaker. That's Tony Atkin in third. So some very quick riders out in this one. Ricky Sanders. Ricky Sanders in fifth. Ricky Sanders in sixth. And now Andrew Whitaker's got up the inside of him. He's chasing him hard here, Andrew Whitaker. He's having a good go at Paul Cooper. So back up the back straight they go then, Andrew Whitaker. Coming out of this top corner, Tony Atkins watching carefully to see if any mistakes are there. Tony Atkins in that third. Ricky Sanford has now backed off a little bit in that fourth place ahead of Tom Perry. So, he's still having a go as they come around this turn, but it's a win for Paul Cooper. Andrew Whittaker finishes second, Tony Atkins third. Ricky Sanford finishes in fourth ahead of Tom Perry. So the results are of race eight. It was a win for number 11, Paul Cooper. Second place, number 17, Andrew Whittaker. Third place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Fourth place, number 04, Ricky Sanford. Fifth place, number one, Tom Perry. Sixth place, number four, Steve Tideswell. Seventh place, number five, David Hollingsby. And eighth place, number 15, Daniel Broughton. And the winning time, one minute 20.53. One minute 20.53. So, race nine, sponsored by Graham Marsh, the second of the three 350 heats. And we have got Dave Mears in gate number one. Number nine, the 350s, and it is Dave Mears who makes a great start. And Liam Astock is in that third, but he's quickly being overtaken by George George Cardo and Mike Peters, who's got the inside of him. So, Dave Mears leading the way here. Head of Brian Ashcroft, Luke Clifton has got himself into that fourth place after a slow start. Over that third place, we'll set about Ryan Ashcroft now. The Dave Mears looking very impressive here. Five times Dave Mears. Oh. The last that flag being made ready here for Dave Mears. Luke Clifton. Rode well there to get himself through the pack. And he'll need to be starting much more quickly if he's going to make any impression on this championship. <laughs> so it is Dave Mears who takes the win. Luke Clifton finishes second, Ryan Ashcroft third, George Fido finishes fourth. Liam Ashcroft fifth, Mike Peter sixth, and Bradley Reynolds in seventh. So the results of race nine, sponsored by Graham Marsh, the 350 solo. It was a win for number 19, Dave Mears. Second place, number 51, Luke Clifton. Third place, number 45, Ryan Ashcroft. Fourth place, number 21, George Pardo. Fifth place, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. 6th place, number 37, Mike Peters. And 7th place, number 73, Bradley Reynolds. And the winning time, 1 minute 23.97. 1 minute 23.97. So 
Okay, here we go with race 10, the 350 solos. Paul Burry in gate one. He's won this championship before, but way back in 1995, would you believe? Paul Burry, will today be the day that he wins? Barry Powell made a quick start off the outside, but he's coming. Paul Burry couldn't go past him. That's now Paul Burry who leads Wayne Broadhurst. John Cox is in that third place. And it's Marcus Crutchington in fourth at the moment. Luke Tuck in the fifth. Chris Watts sixth. Barry Powell now recovering from that lift at the start. Finds himself at the back. Very, very smooth. Great to see Paul riding in the 350 glass again. So Barry Powell now has moved himself up to the middle. Around that corner now. Riders enjoy themselves much, much more around that top corner. John Cox is riding quickly in that second. He pulled well away from Wayne Broadhead. His opening ride this afternoon. John Cox will will pick up that third place ahead of Barry Powell, who had to fight hard for the fourth place. Chris Watts finishes fifth. Marcus Crutchington will be sixth ahead of Luke Tuck and Tim Neal. So the results of race 10, the 350 solos. It was a win for number 86, Paul Hurry. Second place, number 61, John Cox. Third place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. Fourth place, number 821, Barry Powell. Fifth place, number 112, Chris Watts. Sixth place, number 176, Marcus Crutchington. Seventh place, number 89, Luke Tuck. And eighth place, number 371, Tim Neal. And the winning time, very quick as well, 1 minute 20.87, 120.87, so very comparable to the time set by Paul Cooper. No doubt Paul Cooper and Paul Hurry, of course, both world-class solo grass track riders. No doubt they'll be there or thereabouts all afternoon and looking very quick as well. But just looking back through the times, the fastest time so far in all of the classes is in the 250 class where Rob Mia posted the fastest time. So interesting to know that the 250s are going quicker than the 350s at the moment. Henry Atkins is the second fastest time so far with 1 minute 20.35 so some very very quick quarter litre engines out there. So as you can see we are pushing on with the thousands right hand sidecars and there is a change, of course, in race number 11, sponsored by Bandit Racewear. We were, we've got no Robbie Simmons and Ryan Barker in this one. And their place will be taken by uh, number 88, Kieran Newman and Corey Taylor, who are new to right-hand sidecar racing. Corey has been riding a left-hand sidecar recently. But he's got some very quick outfits out here with him, I would... Uh, this is a baptism of fire for uh, Kieran Newman for sure with Glyn Blondell, Neil Owen, Andrew Minard, Dale Fish and Harry Saunters to contend with. And uh, some very comp capable riders here as well. Clint Blondell of course from Guernsey with Chris Townsend in the chair this afternoon. And uh, Neil Owen from Wales and Jason Farwell, his passenger, who's from Cornwall. Come together for race meetings only, really. Andrew and Michelle Minard, the husband and wife team, number 19. Relatively new to the sport, Dale Fish and Jordan Fish, but they've been very impressive. And on the outside, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, who are going very well as well at the moment. The way they go then, and it is Saunters and Brown off the outside that make a fantastic start. And Saunters and Brown lead into the first turn ahead of Neil Owen. Clint Blondell's gone very hard on Neil Owen into the first turn. The dust flies and it's Clint Blondell that emerges in second. 
Terry Saunters and Liam Brown looking very impressive in this one. And Chris Townsend. Coming round past us. Our outfits, I believe, somewhere around the track as well. So, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown take a convincing win there. Liam Brown taking a Chris Townsend stolen from the machine in front of us here. He stood straight back up, that's good. So, forgetting rule number one of sidecar passenger in the course, never let go. So, the situation there, as, as Clint Blondell went over the line, his passenger had let go. So, you do have to have both riders on the machine. Looks alright though. See that he's walking back. So the results of race number 11, sponsored by Bandit Raceflare, it was a win for number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Second place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Third place, number 19, Andrew and Michelle Minard. 1 minute 32.56 was the winning time, 1 minute 32.56. So race number 12, sponsored by British Event Catering. And the second of the two right-hand sidecar races. Will Offen and Ricky Pay coming onto the line in this one. Completely changed that front end. Those of you that were here for the Battle of Britain earlier in the year may remember that in the B final, Will, Will Offen had an incident up on the top corner. Completely destroyed the front end of his machine. So he's had a rebuild on the front of that bike. And it looks quite a bit different to those of us that are used to seeing that frame how it used to be. He's gone for the more uh, slung out version of the front end. Lots of these outfits do that now. You'll notice that the front end of the machine is angled quite drastically. And now Will Offen has got a machine that looks very similar to the others as well. So, Will Offen and Ricky Pay returning here, ready for the Masters in a couple of weeks' time, no doubt. There are some very quick outfits in this one. Mark Cosser comes to the line. We're not sure who he's got on the back. We were told Robbie Simmons, but now we're not so sure. So we'll see if we can work it out. Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards had limited bike time this season so far, Tom and Wayne. So getting themselves back up to speed. Again, ready for that Masters in a couple of weeks' time. Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb come to the line here. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch in gate number five. And then Ryan Partridge and Kevin Jones, who are both returning to the sport. Great to see Ryan back racing again. He's had several seasons out. He's got Kevin, the experienced Kevin Jones on the back, helping him out today. So, six outfits on the line. Let's see if we can get six to the finish. So, away they go. It's an even start. Mark Costa has got himself in front and he leads into the turn. Paul Whiteham's in that second place ahead of Will Offen in third. And Tom Costa's found himself in fourth. So, he's quite a way back with a lot of ground to make up here. Paul Whitelam in that second that he is running very, very wide. Paul Whitelam, he's gone very wide and he's allowed Will Offen up inside of him. Got very close as they come past us. And Tom Cossus looking eagerly in that fourth place. He's looking for mistakes to be made. Struggling to get out of this big corner. Tom Cossus has tucked up the inside. He's going to look to do the same. He knows that Wyndham's struggling to get out of this corner, and Tom Costa has done exactly that. He's gone past Paul Whiteham. Paul Whiteham slows as he comes past us and then rejoins the race. 
Now he sets him out, Willoff and Ricky Pay in that second place. So, Mark Husser leading the way here. Tom Foster now going back much closer, much closer to Willoff as they go into that top corner. Willoff and Ricky Pay are going to have to show some speed. Tension off the inside of Willoff as they come around this turn. He's staying on the inside. Mark Husser's going to take the win. It's a dash to the line. Just about win off the line. Brilliant race in the second place between Will Offen and Ricky Pay and Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards. So the results of race 12, sponsored by British Event Catering. The winner was number 37, Mark Cosser. And uh, if someone could let us know who he's got on the back, that would be helpful. Second place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Third place, number 29, Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards. Fourth place, number 92, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. Fifth place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Franch. And sixth place, number 514, Ryan Partridge and Kevin Jones. And the winning time, 1 minute 32.09. 1 minute 32.09. We've already seen both of both Sean, uh, Josh Goodwin and Sean Hughes win their opening rides. Mitch Godden, of course, led his opening ride for almost the whole race before some sort of mechanical issue stopped him. So here we go with race 13. It's very important race 13. Sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. Which of these crews will be able to take this meeting by the scruff of the neck here as the tapes go up? Away they go. Mitch Gordon has nosed the head, but he's got problems and they've come together. Mitch Gordon and Josh Gordon have come together over there. Something went wrong coming off the start for Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. They slowed dramatically. And Josh and Liam have ran into the side of them. So, hopefully everyone will be okay. Not sure what the problem was there for Mitch's machine. He just seemed to slow rapidly. So this is race 14 coming onto the circuit, sponsored by Bake My Day in Headcorn. So we will go back to race 13 later on. And uh, we have got no Natasha, but, uh, Natasha Bartlett and Kira Southgate in this one. So we're waiting to see what's going on over there. We, uh, we know we've got Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb, Rachel Cox and Scott Guttridge are over there as well. James Hogg and Scott Goodwin I can see. Dan Barrick and Mark Hopkins. Luke Russell is sat next to me here, so he won't be, definitely won't be in this one, and we believe that Jake Gearing won't be out either, so we could end up, we've only got four on the line at the moment, we're assuming that Jake's not going to come out. So this will be race 14, and some big points available for these riders here. 
Van Merrick, of course, finished second in his opening ride. And James Hogg finished fourth. So James Hogg does need to make up some points here. It is a perfect opportunity to. As away they go, it is Dan Berwick who leads ahead of James Hogg. second place as we go into this top turn. So Dan Berwick ahead of James Hogg who goes round the outside there all together as they come past us. Dan Berwick, James Hogg and Paul White have all locked in battle here as they go back down into the pit corner. James Hogg is on that fast, wide outside line, but he's allowing Paul White to the inside of him. He's allowing him to make the move. Back into this pit corner there. That's a here. James Hogg, he's got a little bit wider into the third. Paul White is right there up the inside. They are absolutely locked together once again. Now James Hogg breaks away from Paul White when he goes after Dan Berwick. That is a very fast line out there on the outside. But he's leaving such a space for Paul Whiteham to race. The big corner there, Dan Barrett and Mark Hopkins. Looks like they've got things going up here, but James Hogg is very quick on that outside. He's once again right on the shoulder of Dan Barrett as they come off that turn. One more lap to go then. James Hogg goes out into the dirt once again. He goes round the outside. He's quick down that back straight. Paul Whiteham's not got this place. I think the opportunity's gone because Dan Berwick has got himself away now. He looks like he's himself in that first place. James Hogg is going to take a very hard fought second ahead of just ahead of Paul Whiteland in third and Rachel Cox fourth. So the results of race 14, sponsored by Bake My Day Headcorn. It was a win for number 68, Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. Second place, number 73, James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. Third place, number 92, Paul Whiteleman and Richard Webb. Fourth place, number 13, Rachel Cox and Scott Guttridge. The winning time, 127.13. 127.13. So a good 500 sidecar race there. Some big points available for the likes of James Hogg, Dan Berwick and Paul Whiteleman as well. So we are expecting to see the 250cc solos in this next one, race 15. Josh Goodwin still being uh, monitored as we speak, and we are hoping to see him again. So they're giving him every single chance to get himself back in that rerun of race 13, which is great to hear. Really good to hear that uh, that's happening. It does mean that there's a little bit of a change in the program. You can see that the 250 solos are being pushed onto the circuit. Sponsored by Clive Salmon. And we will have Ben Ilsley in gate one, who had a third first time out. Aidan Arthur, who had to work very hard for his fourth place first time out. Russell Little had a fourth first time out as well. David Knowles, who led for a couple of laps before being overtaken. He was second first time out, as too was Cameron Taylor. So, we've got none of our first peak winners here. We have got David Knowles and Cameron Taylor, who are well in amongst the points. So they've now got an opportunity to pile on the pressure on Rob Mia, Jake Mulford and Henry Atkins by scoring a few points here. Cameron Taylor and David Knowles have made good starts off the outside. Ben Ilsley going to start. Well, so David Knowles leads the way. Cameron Taylor now goes after him in that second place. He's very, very quick in the middle of the corner. But David Knowles is so much faster up the straights. Aidan Arthur's now having a go at Ben Ilsley in that third, and Aidan Arthur now leads into third. And Cameron Taylor has taken over the lead at the front. So Cameron Taylor ahead of David Knowles. very very quick as he comes off this turn he'll be disappointed with that second place in his opening ride and now Russell Little's now having a go at Ben Ilsley as he goes past him going into this turn and one. he looks very very quick he's trying to be 
David Knowles in that second place. Ben Ilsley's got himself back into fourth ahead of Russell Little. Final time into the afternoon. 101 Cameron Taylor. David Knowles will pick up second place ahead of Russell Little. Number eight ahead of Russell Little. Number 91. And Gary Cook and Lee Bassett finish off the race. So the results of race 15, sponsored by Clive Salmon. It was a win for number 101, Cameron Taylor. Second place, number 64, David Knowles. Third place, number 60, Aidan Arthur. Fourth place, number 8, Ben Ilsley. Fifth place, number 91, Russell Little. Sixth place, number 6, Gary Cook. And seventh place, number 3, Lee Bassett. The winning time... 1 minute 22.66 1 minute 22.66 so I think we're moving on to race 16 next so we will still come back to this race 13 later it's got to happen we are still just waiting to see the condition of Josh Goodwin so I think we're going with race 16 unless something else emerges from the bit box we'll wait and see race 16 is sponsored by Sweet Treats and we will see Luke Harris who had a second in his opening ride you will also see the very quick starting Carl Beddingfield, Jordan Derrick, Chris Mackett, Mark Woods. Winner first time around, Jake Mulford and Richie Knight as well. So another tough looking 250 solo lineup for race number 16. So I can quickly see by the green plates with the white numbers that we have got the 250 solos for race 16 coming onto the circuit. So race 13 still awaits in the pit box. I'm sure we'll get back to that at some point. But we press on with this 250 competition for the time being. So here we go with race number 16. Tapes up. Away they go. Jake Mulford, Luke Harris and Carl Benningfield make the start. Mulford goes to turn together. Jake Mulford leads them as they get into the middle of the corner. Luke Harris is in that second already. Jake Mulford has grown such a big lead over Luke Harris. He looks very, very quick. Richie Knight is the rider that's battling away with Carl Beddingfield for that third. He goes round the outside of it. And I think that's where the action's going to be because Jake Mulford is looking absolutely fantastic here. Luke Harris has got no answer to him at all. Richie Knight has got himself through into that third. Jordan Derrick is now battling away in that fourth place. Jordan Derrick. Looking very good for a second win in this race. Mark Woods is now having a go at Carl Beddingfield. Carl Beddingfield, who currently occupies feet, it's really going to be enough this one. He made a great start, but there's so many fast words in the market. Luke Harris finishes second. Richie Knight will come home with a very good third place. Ahead of Jordan Derrick in fourth. Carl Reddingfield fifth. Mark Woods finishes sixth. And Chris Mackett in seventh place. So the results of race 16, sponsored by Sweet Treats. It was a win for number 72, Jake Mulford. Two out of two for him. Second place, number 26, Luke Harris. Third place, number 229, Richie Knight. Fourth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. Fifth place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. Sixth place, number 24, Mark Woods. And seventh place, number 68, and that is Chris Mackett. Winning time, 1 minute 20.87, 120.87. And we have now got race 13 coming onto the circuit. So back through the programme, and we have got the rerun of race number 13. And let's just see who we've got. Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett go straight to the line. Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith are out there. Jordan Smith 
is circulating as well. Richard Jenner's there. Simon Beard's there. And sadly, it doesn't look like we can see Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. That is a real, real shame. Oh, as I say that, he comes onto the circuit. That's great to see. So, Josh and Liam are coming onto the circuit. And that really is a relief because this competition is obviously a very stiff one. And Josh is one of the favourites for it. So, great to see all of our riders fit and healthy and ready to go. I like how he built up the drama by coming on <laughs> in the track, track exit as well. Very good. So, we have got a full complement of riders for race number 13. Sponsored by Jumping Monkey Inflatables. And it is a rerun. So, Simon Beard, Josh Goodwin in gates 3 and 4 in the middle. Richard Jenner, Jordan Smith on the inside two gates. And Mitch Godden and Sean Hughes coming off the outside in what we said looked like a very, very difficult race. We've waited a long time for it. Let's hope that second time we get a good race. I can tell you that Mitch got in his uh, primary belt snapped in the opening row. That's why he came to a stop very quickly. So, tapes up, away they go. It's an even break. It's Simon Beard who's made a good start off of the inside. <laughs> Third. Sean Hughes has arrived very, very quickly in the middle of the corner. But it's Mitch Goodwin who leads. Simon Beard is in our second. Sean Hughes is now going round the outside of Josh Goodwin. They are absolutely neck and neck for third and fourth. Josh Goodwin plugging away up the inside of Simon Beard. And Sean Hughes has got round them. Sean Hughes has got round them. Sean Hughes has got and Paul Smith comfortably lead this one. But they did that earlier on as well. Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett now in that second place. A great ride down that pit corner to go round the outside of Simon Beard and Josh Goodwin. But now they've got Goodwin and Brown all over the back of them. Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith. So there's a problem for Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. It looks like there's something... Not working on the machine, looks like he was down doing some of it the fuel line, perhaps the red Paul Smith then, coming round for the final time. A solid win for the A great ride by them. Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett finish second. Jordan Smith will finish third. And Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown circulated to finish fourth. It looked like there was some sort of problem with the machine. Down to the right of the engine, you can see that Liam is nursing something down there. Just trying to squint to see what it is. There's something that's come adrift, but he still picks up points for fourth. So the results of race 13, back in your programme, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. It was a win for number nine, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Second place, number 77, Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. Third place, number 842, Jordan Smith and Joe Page. And fourth place, number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. One minute 22.75 was the winning time. One minute 22.75. And we lost several riders in that one as well. Simon Beard was well placed when he came to a grinding halt. So it looks like we're all sorted, all of the various bits that have fallen off have been collected. So, back to race 17, the 250 solo. No full duck in this one, but we have got Henry Atkins, Luke Tuck, Red Deer, Vinnie Smith, Graham Thomas and Chris Steele. Away they go, it's Rob Mir, Henry Atkins and Chris Steele. They both won their opening rides. It's Henry Atkins who's pushing Rob Mir incredibly wide. They've both gone very, very wide, and it's Henry Atkins who leads. That was a tough first corner. Rob Mears found himself in second. They both did brilliantly to stay on the circuit. Such is the skill of these two riders. And now Rob Mears... Rob Mears... Chris Gilbert, Thomas, But Henry Atkins looks very, very quick at the front. Rob Mears now in that second has got no answer to him at the moment. Between these two, they 
So, race 19, the second of the left-hand sidecars. And we have got Joe and Jordan Holland. Winners, first time out, Rob Heath and Kyle Bish. Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. Tony Penfold and Tommy Penfold. Danny and Harry Hill. They were also winners, first time out. And Tommy Penfold and William Naden. So, we've got two first heat winners. We've got Michael Phillips, who had a second first time out. We've got Joe Holland, who had a fourth. Tommy Penfold had a fourth. Tony Penfold had a fifth. So, Rob Heath and Danny Hill, right at the pointy end at the moment, they will want to maintain that maximum, having won their opening ride. Of course, the higher point scorer gets to choose their gate position in the final, so that's quite important. So, race 19, the left-hand sidecars already on the line, ready to go. The start marshal looks ready. And tapes up, away they go, and Rob Heath and Kyle Fish have got plenty of drive once again, but they are... Rob Heath to go a bit quicker into the turn, so it's Rob Heath once again who leads, Tommy Penfold in that second place. And I'm looking for Danny Hill, who is in third at the moment, Danny Hill. And Michael Phillips is in fourth, but Michael Phillips has gone past and Danny Hill's hit problems. What a shame there for Danny Hill. It looks like his cut out has come adrift. In fact, I think he's trying to get his cut out back on. So a bit of dirt has hit that cut out. Well but at the front, Tommy Penfold's having a look at Rob Heath here at the front. Rob Heath is going to have to keep him out there. Tommy's trying to go round the outside, but Rob Heath is a little bit quicker off the turn. Michael Phillips watching what's going on in front of him. He's watching Tommy Penfold go wide. He's trying to come up and fill the gaps on the inside. Danny Hill has got Danny Hill back onto the machine. So Rob Heath has now opened up a little bit of a gap over Tom Penfold in that second place. Michael Phillips keenly looking on in that third place, waiting for a mistake. <laughs> This will be good for, top, for Rob Heath, especially if he notices that Danny Hill is not having the best of time in the back. So Rob Heath and Kyle Fish coming round the turn for the final time. It is a win for Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. Two out of two for them. Tommy Penzal finishes second. Michael Smith third. And Joe Holland finishes fourth, although he's got his hand in the air. And Danny Hill will have to be content with this fifth place. So the results of race 19. It was a win for number 18, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. Second place, number 96, Tommy Penfold and William Naden. Third place, number 98, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. Fourth place, number 27, Joe and Jordan Holland. And fifth place to number 124, Danny Hill. And possibly Harry Hill. We've got a suspicion that might be Kieran Ivey on the back of Danny Hill, but we'd love to hear confirmation from the pits, if anybody knows. Uh, 135.91 was the winning time for Rob Heath. 135.91. And that is two wins out of two for Rob Heath. So he sits pretty at the top of the table for the left-hand sidecars going into leg number three. Starting with the fifth earlier on, Ricky Sanford had a fourth in front of him in that ride as well. So, Ricky Sanford perhaps the man to look for in this one as well. So, here we go, we've raced 20 and it is Tom Perry who's made a good start and Ricky Sanford has got the as well. But it is Tom Perry who leads into the turn. He's quite tentative going into the turn. Ricky Sanford's gone after him in that second place. It is Tom Perry that looks good in this one. Liam Ashcroft in that third place ahead of Mike Peters and Marcus Crutchington. 
But this is a bit more like it for Tom Perry. He's a very, very quick rider. <laughs> for the sort of style we are used to seeing from Tom Perry. Ricky Sanford in that second place, once again piling in plenty of points. You want to get into that top eight at the end of the day for the final. Very spread out at the front. Front six the back at the back with Daniel Wilson. Very spread out here. So interesting to see the lines being taken by both Tom Perry and the two guys that are going high into that loose on the outside. That's where they're going to find the drive. The outside, Tom Perry slowed up quite a bit to get the straight. This afternoon, Ricky Sanford finishes second ahead of Liam Ashcroft in third. Michael Peters very comfortable in that fourth place as well. Marcus Crutchington finishes fifth ahead of Daniel Broughton and Tim Neal. So the results of race 20, the 350 solos. It was a win for number one, Tom Perry. Second place, number 04, Richard Sanders. Third place, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. Fourth place, number 37, Mike Peters. Fifth place, number 176, Marcus Crutchington. Sixth place, Daniel Broughton. 7th place, number 371, Tim Neal. And the winning time, 124, 127.04. So, Tom Perry becomes the fourth heat winner in the 350 solos. As we turn our attention to race 21, we have got Paul Hurry coming out of gate four in this one. He is a first heat winner. Andrew Whitaker had a very solid looking second place in his opening ride, and as too did John Cox, who was beaten by Paul Hurry in the opening ride. Luke Clifton also had a second place, so we've got a lot of, we've got all three of the second place riders here going up against Paul Hurry, and Ryan Ashcroft off the outside was well placed as well. He was third in his opening ride too, so we've got some high point scorers in this one, in this race 21. made a good trap off the outside but there are three rounds good start this time and it is Luke Clifton that leads into the turn Andrew Whitaker's up the inside Paul Hurry's in that third place they are all together as they come past us Whitaker and Hurry are very close in that second and third place John Cox is in that fourth so Luke Clifton a great ride off the start for him to get himself in front one of our riders has gone wide that's Andrew Whitaker <laughs> Start his ride, and this time he's made the start and he is looking very, very quick at the front. Paul Hurry at the moment has got no answer to him. Clifton is going up into that dirt. He's got a wide line around that top corner that looks very, very good. Paul Hurry is starting to pile on the pressure. So great racing there between Paul Hurry and Luke Clifton. So a good race 21, right to the finish. It was a win in the end for number 86, Paul Hurry. Second place, number 51, Luke Clifton. Third place, number 611, John Cox. Fourth place, number 45, Ryan Ashcroft. 
Fifth place, number 17, Andrew Whitaker. Sixth place, number 89, Luke Tuck. Seventh place, number five, David Hollingsby. And eighth place, number four, Steve Sidewell. Time, one minute, 20.84, 120 So, a maximum two out of two for Paul Hurry. And now we have got first heat winners, Paul Cooper and Dave Mears coming out here. And they will not have it their own way because they have also got four times British champion Tony Atkin out with them here. He looked quick in his opening ride. Wayne Broadhurst is out there too in his opening. He went well in his opening ride. So stiff competition here in this race number 22. Tony Atkin, of course, his first British championship as far back as 1993 was when he won his first title. And many of us will remember the battles he had with Jason Handley over that 350 title as they toed and throwed for many years over that title. Tony Atkin would love to win another British Championship here today. So Bradley Reynolds, Barry Powell, Paul Cooper, Dave Mears, Chris Watts, George Pardo, Wayne Broadhurst and Tony Atkin all come to the line here for this race 22. Start the hot up here in the 350 competition. Away they go. There's a problem in the middle of the yeah, in the middle of the circuit, but away they go. Second place, Dave is cut into third. So Paul Cooper, he starts to run wide. Tony Atkin has run very wide. He's just about to get the machine in. Barry Powell's in that fourth place. Wayne Broadhurst fifth. Ahead of George Pardo, but Paul Cooper's looking brilliant in this one. He has got a good gap of the Dave Mears is in that third place. So, Paul Cooper leading Tony Atkin. Two riders who have both been British champions before. And Cooper, he is having a look at there'll be one more lap if Tony Atkin is going to get on first Cooper. Paul looks a lot wider on this top bottom turn on this big corner he goes a little bit wider this time Tony Atkin has gone a little bit wider as well so once again Paul Cooper Tony Atkin is drawing close to him for the final time it is a win for Paul Cooper two out of two Tony Atkin finishes second Dave Mears finishes in third Barry Powell fourth Wayne Broadhurst fifth George Pardo sixth and Chris Watts finishes in seventh OK race 22 the 350 solos and it was a win a second of the afternoon for number 11 Paul Cooper second place number 10 Tony Atkin Third place, number 19, Dave Mears. Fourth place, number 821, Barry Powell. Fifth place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. Sixth place, number 21, George Pardo. Seventh place, number 112, Chris Watts. And the winning time, rather spookily, in race 22, the winning time, 1 minute 22.22. How strange is that? So... Race 22 completes the second leg rides of the 350s. And it's uh, two wins out of two for both Paul Cooper and Paul Hurry, who now sit on top of the competition going into leg three. So race 23, we turn our attention to the right-hand sidecar, sponsored by Bandit Racewear. We have got no uh, Josh Russell in the chair of Ryan Partridge. That is Kevin Jones, who's on with Ryan Partridge. We have got no Jordan Smith on with Clint Blondell. That is Chris Townsend. Although Chris had a tumble in the uh, earlier ride, so we might not see Chris. We'll have to wait and see. We've got no Robbie Simmons and Ryan Barker. Their place is taken by number 88, Kieran Newman. And Corey Taylor. So we've only got four outfits there at the moment. Got Ryan Partridge on gate one. There's no Paul Whiteham on gate two. There's no Clint Blondell on gate three.
we have got Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. We have got Kieran Newman and Corey Taylor. And we have got Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. So I can only assume that uh, Clint Blondell has pulled out after that incident with his passenger earlier. And Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb have decided that one class on a hot summer's day is enough. Because they are, of course, competing for the British Championships in the 500 class. So just the four outfits then. So away they go. Ryan Partridge looks like he's driving very hard off the inside. But it's Michael Austin and Billy Branch who lead into the turn. Neil Owens followed him in there. Ryan Partridge in that third. Kieran Newman just gets going now. So Michael Austin and Billy Branch. They lead the and going well like this, we've seen it several times before, they're going very wide in the pit corner and allowing Neil Owen plenty of space up the inside. But it is Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch who lead the way. So Neil Owen and Jason Farwell, they can see that Michael Austin is going outside. They can want to do that. Very, very quick out. So round they come once again, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch looking comfortable in this one. Ahead of Neil Owen and Jason Farwell, Ryan Partridge getting used to that very quickly. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch leading the way. Running wide, he's allowing the bike to run wide. A little bit more speed out on there perhaps, and Neil Owen's trying to tuck up the inside. But he's just not quick enough to make an impression on Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Very, very nicely for this pairing from you. So into the pit turn. To the turn. A good win here for Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. They take the win ahead of Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Ryan Partridge finishes third. And Kieran Newman will pick up the points for him. He makes his way round the pit corner. So, race 23, sponsored by Bandit Racewear. It was a win for number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Second place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Third place, number 514, Ryan Partridge and Kevin Jones. And fourth place, number 88, Kieran Newman and Corey Taylor. The winning time, 1 minute 34, exactly 1 minute 34.00. So, race 24, sponsored by British Event Catering, the right-hand sidecars once again. Now, we believe that Mark Cossa is actually passengered by Gareth Williams now. We've had all sorts of various different reports. Some people have put Kiz Ivy on there. He's definitely not on there. That's uh, Danny Hill's passenger. Robbie Simmons nearly went on there at one point, but we think it is definitely Gareth Williams that's on there. Mark's usual passenger. He won his opening ride, and so did Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, who looked very, very quick as well in that opening ride. So they are the two heat winners. And the race times were very comparable as well between them. So it will be interesting to see what happens here. Uh, now I'm having a look and that looks like Wayne Rearcard's on the back of Mark Cossa. So things get even more confusing. I wish they'd tell us what's going on. Is Tom out there? No, can't see Tom. So we can only assume that Tom has decided that he's had enough. Tom was suffering with an injury, he picked up an injury racing on a road racing uh, machine recently. So we can only assume that Tom's decided that uh, he's had enough and he's lent the passenger to Mark. Unless that is Tom, of course, because Tom's had a go on the back as well. But we'll wait for conf confirmation later on. Either way, I don't think that's Gareth Williams. So away we go, and it is Terry Saunters and Mark Costa that both make a good start. They are very even as they get into the turn. Terry Saunters is very hard going to the turn. It's Terry Saunters and Liam Brown that lead. Mark Costa tucks back up the inside, but Terry Saunters has got it covered. So it's Terry Saunters. Mark Costa goes in very 
Bernardo and Terry Saunders. An email lead, so it's Mark Costa ahead of Terry Saunders. Terry is not giving up, there he is, flat out as they come past us. Now Mark Costa starts to take control of this race. He starts to pull away from Terry Saunders. Mark Costa now. Dale and Jordan Fish currently in that fall, so as they start to spread out. Well, the back off, Mark Crosser. Doing a fantastic job. Okay, one more lap to go for Mark Crosser and Wayne Rickards. And Dale Fish is pulling off. Wayne Rickards. Take this race, but it's been fast, very long. They're going to take the win here. Terry Saunders and Liam Brown. First place will be Will Offer and Ricky Fay. And Andrew Minard and Michelle Minard will finish fourth. So the results of race 24, sponsored by British event catering, it was a win for number 37, Mark Cosser and Wayne Rickards. Second place, number 24, Terry Saunders and Luke Brown. Third place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. And fourth place, number 19, Andrew and Michelle Minard. The winning time, 1 minute 31.66. 1 minute 31.66. So, race 25, the five hundred side cars, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown so far, of course, have had a win and a fourth after suffering some problems in their last one. We've got no Jake Gearing and Luke Russell in this one. Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb have been scoring well so far. They have had a third and a fifth so far. Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins there, right in amongst it as well, with a second and a win. Simon Beard had a DNF in his last ride, and Rachel Cox has been scoring well as well. So, plenty of points at the moment. Of course, the top six will go to the final to be become British champion. The top two will go to the European final in 2023. So, race 25 then, four outfits on the line. So, away they go, and it is Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown that make it. Third, Liam Brown second, Paul Whiteman in third. And we've got no Simon Beard in this one either, so that's a shame to see. But Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown here, they need to start piling on the points. At the moment, they aren't in that all-important top two, and this is the last chance that they can try and make their way into that top two for that European final. Dan Berwick is in that top two. So, a big ride here. To really pile the pressure on to Josh Goodwin if he can, but at the moment, he's having to defend from Paul Whitelam, who gets lost in the dust a little bit as he comes past us. So, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown looking good in this final. in their second ride. Great to see them back on the bike after that incident. And spare a thought for Liam as well, of course. He was just out in race 24 from the 1000 Psycho and now he's out in race 25. He must be absolutely exhausted in that Kevlar suit. Second place. Dan Barrick has slowed quite dramatically. And that's dropped him back to third, so that could be devastating for Dan Berwick. He's working in front of the top two. Josh Goodwin takes the win. Paul Whiteland finishes in second. Dan Berwick has a problem there. I think it might be a puncture. It is a puncture, I think, as they come past us. So third place for Dan Berwick. And that is a shame because he was 
one of the front runners going into that race. So the results of race 25, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. It was a win for number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Second place, number 92, Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb. Third place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. And fourth place, number 13, Rachel Cox and Scott Gutteridge. Winning time, 1 minute 24.47. 1 minute 24.47. So that does make things slightly interesting because as we head into their fourth leg, Josh Goodwin now will be on 17 points and Dan Berwick is now on 16 points. So all to play for still in this class as we go to race 26, the other of the 500 sidecar heats sponsored by Bake My Day Headcorn. No Tash Bartlett and Kira Southgate in gate five. But we are expecting to see James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett, Richard Jenner and Michael Chittenden, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith, and Jordan Smith and Joe Page. And at the moment, Mitch Godden has had a win in a second, so he's on 12 points. Sean Hughes has also had a win in a second, so he's on 12 points. James Hogg has had a fourth and a second. And Richard Jenner had a DNF in his last ride, so he's quite way down the order at the moment. After this, after this race, could the track maintenance man please make his way to the first turn? Looks like he's on his way already. So the start marker is ready. Race 26 to begin, tapes up, away they go, and James Hogg's made a good start off the inside, but it's Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith. Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith lead into the turn ahead of James Hogg, and Scott Goodwin is to dust up in the middle between Jordan Smith and Richard Jenner and Sean Hughes, who's found himself right at the back with an awful lot of work to do. Sean Hughes now gets himself into third, and he sets about James Hogg and Scott Goodwin in that second. He looks very good. Turn. Sean Hughes is much, much quicker into the turn. He's going out into the dirt. He's going to try and go right round the outside of James Hogg. That's exactly what he's done. A great ride by Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett to recover second place. If he could just get out the start, he could submit. Once again, here, out of three here. If they can secure this one. One more lap to go for that. James Hogg and Scott Goodwin pick up a third and it's Jordan Smith and Joe Page for. So a very quick race time for Mitch Godden in that one. But here is the official result of race 26. It was a win for number nine, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Second place, number 77, Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. Third place, number 73, James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. Fourth place, number 842, uh, Jordan Smith and Joe Page, and fifth place, number 87, Richard Jenner and Michael Chittenden. And the winning time, 1 minute 21.97. 1 minute 21.97. So a very quick time there for Mitchell Godden. Quite a few seconds quicker in that one. And perhaps he's now beginning to get to grips with this circuit, get the setup right. So back to the 250 solo sponsored by Clive Salmon for race 27 and we have got Cameron Taylor in this one who's had a win in a second. We've got Henry Atkins who's had two wins out of two. And we've also got Brad Thomas, Chris Still, Chris Blackett, Lee Bassett and Mark Woods as they away they go. Chris Still's made an excellent. A 
ahead of Graham Thomas. And Yakins is currently in that third, and he's going to try and go right round the outside of him. That's exactly what he's done. And it's Henry Atkins who leads coming off the turn. Chris Finn and Graham Thomas are fighting over that second and third. Cameron Taylor is there in fourth. I'm expecting to see him try and sweep round the outside. He's got round the outside of Chris Finn. <laughs> Ahead again, but Cameron Taylor will definitely go again here. machine a lot, lot quicker in the middle of the corners. He's able to make up a lot of ground on Graham Thomas in the middle of the corners. This time you see Cameron Taylor go out into the dirt. Once again, Graham Thomas is Henry Atkins looking very good once again at the front. But place, Cameron Taylor is having all sorts of trouble trying to get past Graham Thomas, who is using all of his years of experience to keep the youngster at bay. Back into the pit corner once again, Cameron Taylor. Can he do it this time? Graham Thomas is right He comes alongside him now, Cameron Taylor is trying to Graham Thomas attack once again. Yes, he will. Graham Thomas back up the inside. Henry Atkins takes his first round, but it's second for Cameron Taylor. He had to work very, very hard for that. Third place to Graham Thomas. Chris Still finishes in fourth. And Mark Woods fifth. Great race in the second place between Cameron Taylor and Graham Thomas. So the results of race 27, the 250cc solo, sponsored by Clive Salmon. It was a win for number 29, Henry Atkins. Second place, number 101, Cameron Taylor. Third place, number 314, Graham Thomas. Fourth place, number 76, Chris Still. Fifth place, number 24, Mark Woods. And sixth place, number 3, Lee Bassett. And a winning time, 1 minute 20.75. 1 minute 20.75. So not as quickest, but most importantly of all, 3 out of 3 for Henry Atkins. And in race 28, sponsored by Sweet Treats, we have got Jake Mulford coming to the line. And he's had two wins out of two as well. He would have just sat in the pit box and watched Henry Atkins take his third win. Will Jake Mulford be able to continue to pile on the pressure here and take this win? He is certainly not going to have it his own way because he has got Rob Meir out of gate one. Rob Meir was very, very quick in his opening ride. Luke Harris, who's had two second places so far. Those three, I would suggest, in gates one, two, and three, are the three to watch here. They are the ones that have been in amongst it. Luke Harris would have had to have the setup quite drastically. I would imagine that this would be a little bit off the pace. So, takes up away, they go, and it is Rob Meir and Jake Mulford and Luke Harris together. Rob Meir, he leads. Going into that first turn, he catches a few bits of Rick in the middle of the turn. Luke Harris has seen it and he tries to go up the inside. This Rob Meir who leads Luke Harris. Jake Mulford in that third. He's going to have to work hard now to get past Luke Harris because Luke Harris will want to keep him out on the outside. Right round the outside and he's now got himself in front of Luke Harris. So a good ride for Jake Mulford but if he wants to carry on this maximum if he wants to match the point scoring of Henry Atkins, he's going to have to find a way to catch up with Rob So into the turn again. Rob Meir certainly doesn't look like slowing. Jake at the moment, he is getting closer, ever so closer. But he's only got half a lap left really to make an impression on Rob Meir. to have completed about a three as Rob Meir once again goes into the day. It's going to be a win for Ryder 500. Jake Mulford finishes in second. Luke Harris will finish third. And it will be Aiden Arthur who finishes in fourth ahead of Richie Knight. So the results of race 28, the 250 solo, sponsored by Sweet Treats. It was a win for number 500, Rob Meir. Second place, number 72, Jake Mulford. Third place, number 26, Luke Harris. Fourth place, number 60, Aidan Arthur. 
Fifth place, number 229, Richie Knight. And sixth place, number six, Gary Cook. And the winning time, 1 minute 20.16. 120.16. So, again, very comparable to Henry Atkins' time, but a little bit quicker. And these 250 riders are looking incredibly quick this afternoon. So race 29 we look to now, the third of the 250 solos, and we have got no Paul Dufty in this one, number 815, but we've got Vinnie Smith, Carl Beddingfield, David Knowles. So um, we've got a piece of Rob Lee's bike down the bottom here that I think you may need. Uh, if anyone can hear us in the pit, can you send Rob or one of his people down to the top deck? There's something here that he will need. Uh, away we go with race number 29. Start. Russell Little goes diving into that second place. Carl Beddingfield is in that third, but he's got a rider coming round the outside of him. Ben Ilsley's coming round the outside. Vinnie Smith has gone extremely wide coming off this turn. As to us, Jordan Derrick as they come past us. So, David Knowles here looking quick. Ben Ilsley has got into that second place. He's got past Russell Little. Carl Beddingfield has gone wide. She's looking very good for David Knowles, the 2004 British champion. Once again, Vinnie Smith almost comes in and joins us in the PA box. So, Ben Hillsley looking good in that second place. Jordan Derrick now gets himself outside of Russell Little. Carl Beddingfield is looking good in that second place. So, one more lap to go then. David Knowles looking good in this one. Ben Hills is in that second, Jordan Derrick now has got himself through into third place. And Russell Little, they all come together as they go into that turn. Ben Hills, Lee, Russell Little and Jordan Derrick all together. And Vinny Smith is going to be inside of Russell Little, so there's action at the back. David Knowles is convincingly going to win this one. Ben Hills is clinging on to that second place. Jordan Derrick and Vinny Smith getting close. It's going to be very close to the line. Very close indeed. So the result of race 29, slightly amended result. Uh, a few riders going outside the track, or a rider in particular being penalised for going outside the track markers a couple of times there. But the win was number 64, David Knowles. Second place, number 8, Ben Ilsley. Third place, number 91, Russell Little. Fourth place, number 27, Vinnie Smith. Fifth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. And sixth place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. The winning time is 127.25. 127.25. Joe and Jordan Holland. Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey. There's a change of passenger there, of course. Alex Bauman and Mark Hopkins, and at the moment, two wins out of two, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish in gate six. So, race number 30 here, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish having not been beaten yet this afternoon. Tommy Penfold and William Naden looked quick in that last ride. Perhaps this is the race where they can take their first win. Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey, of course, won their opening ride. And in the second ride, lost the cutout as they come past us. Lots of dirt hit that cutout, knocked it adrift, and that caused them to stop. So they will be looking for another win here and try and pick things up a little bit moving forward. So, the left-hand side cars, the third of the fourth legs. After this leg, we really will start to think about who's going to get into that top six. Who will race for the British Championship. So, takes up away, they go, one of the riders is left on the start, but it is Rob Heath that's made a good start off the outside. Second place, Danny Hill's in that third at the moment as he tries to go round the outside of Tommy Penfold on this top corner, and Danny Hill has got himself into that second place, that's a good ride from Danny Hill to get himself into second. But it's Rob Heath who leads then, Danny Hill in that second, Tommy, pa Tommy Penfold in third. Joe and Jordan Holland currently in that fourth place, and Rob Heath has got Danny Hill. Diving wide, into the 
into this top turn. Rob Heath will try and keep him out there. He's brilliant on this inside line, Rob Heath. He will be able to hear Danny Hill all over the back of him. Back into the pit turn. This time Danny Hill's got even wider going into that exit, of the, into the entrance of the turn. And he'll look to cut back up the banking. But Rob Heath and Kyle Fish, they still... <laughs> close this time perhaps they feel that that second place will be enough going forward one more lap to go then for Rob Heath and Kyle Fish so it's Rob Heath and Kyle Fish and Ivy and it's the reigning champion so that really is bad as well in the middle but this is going to be three wins out of three here and there's problems as they come past us Rob Heath and Kyle Fish I think picked up a puncture there at the end they looked like they were having all sorts of trouble getting the machine out of the turn but they did enough to take the win so the results of race 30 it was a win for number 18 Rob Heath and Kyle Fish Possibly picking up a puncture at the end there. Second place, number 124, Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey. Third place, number 96, Tommy Penfold and William Naden. Fourth place, number 193, Steve North and Steve North Jr. 136.56 is the winning time, 136.56. So, race 31, the second of the left-hand sidecars. And we have got Tony and Tom Penfold. Off of gate one, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge, who have been gating really well this afternoon, getting in amongst the points. Two second places so far for outfit number 16, so they are well in amongst it at the moment. Martin Cuff and Colin Clark won their last ride convincingly. Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds will be in gate four. Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips in gate five and Billy Penfold and Richard Webb off the outside so we have got five outfits so perhaps no Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds and that is a real shame had a torrid afternoon Away they go, and it's Josh Penfold again who's made a good start. Michael Phillips has made a good start as well. Josh Penfold in second, looking for Martin Cuff. He's way back in fourth at the moment, so a lot of work to do for Martin Cuff if he wants to pile on some points here. But Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips lead. Martin Cuff now is starting to wind up that machine in that fourth place. Problems for Billy Penfold as he pulls off. But at the front, Josh Penfold's got up the inside of Michael Phillips. He moved through into the lead ahead of Michael Phillips in that second place. Tony Penfold looking good in that third. He's now got up the inside of Michael Phillips as well. It all gets very close as they come off of this turn. So, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge riding well here. But they have got a battle going on behind them because Michael Phillips is having to hold off Tony Penfold. He's trying to round up and moves into third. So none of them can afford to make a mistake as they all go into this turn. They're all together in their second, third and fourth. Now Martin Cuff gets himself into that second. Tony Penfold finds himself right on the outside and at the back. So Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge leading the way still, but Martin Cuff, he has got the bit between his teeth here. Can he make an impression on this lead? Out the back towards fourth, but as they come around this turn for the final time, Martin Cuff's going to have another go at Josh Penfold as they come around this turn. But it is Josh Penfold who wins. Martin Cuff second, Michael Phillips third, and Tony Penfold fourth. 
A hugely entertaining race 31 from the left-hand side cars. So the results of race 31, it was a win for number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Second place, number 128, Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Third place, number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. And fourth place, number 25, Tony and Tom Penfold. The winning time, 1 minute 37.60. 1 minute 37.60. And we go back to the two-wheeled action here with the 350 solos, race number 32. And in this race 32, we have got Ricky Sanford, who's been there or thereabouts all afternoon. But it looks like a lot of the front runners go in races 33 and 34. So once again here, big opportunity to score some big points here. around the outside so it's Ricky Sanford ahead of Ryan Ashcroft Liam Ashcroft's having a go around the outside as well George Cargo isn't far away either so we've got three Midland centre riders chasing down the southeastern centre rider at the moment Ricky Sanford looking good here Ryan Ashcroft Liam Ashcroft is third so round the turn they come then Ricky Sanford looking good here but Ryan Ashcroft He's not letting him get away, he's not letting him get too far in front of him. Sanford, number two. He is looking good in this one. He's going to try and gain a little bit more speed on the outside. He's definitely not letting this one go in that second place. He does want to get on terms with Ricky Sanford. He's gone up the bank in there. That's a great ride for Ryan Ashcroft. He's got it. They're absolutely together for this final turn. Ryan Ashcroft from round the outside. Ryan Ashcroft in the He comes round the turn and he's going to be the for Ryan Ashcroft. Ricky Sanford finishes second. Liam Ashcroft third and George Parkway fourth. So the results of race 32, the 350 solos, it was a win for number 45, Brian Ashcroft. Second place, number 04, Ricky Sanford. Third place, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. Fourth place, number 21, George Pardo. Fifth place, number 112, Chris Watts. Sixth place, number 371, Tim Neal. Seventh place, number 15, Daniel Broughton. And eighth place, number 5, Martin Hollingsby, David Hollingsby. Make Martin come out of retirement for a minute then. 125.50 was the winning time. 125.50. And now we go back to race 33. We go to race 33, the 350 solos. And we have got Tony Atkin in gate one. Yet to win a race, but looking incredibly quick. In this Perhaps he's saving something for those finals. Wayne Broadhurst, John Cox, Andrew Whittaker, full hurry. No David one in second ride, as too did Tom Perry. Away they go then. Tom Perry. They are all together for that second place. Five or six riders all together. Tom Perry leads, and it's uh, Luke Clifton around the outside. Tony Atkins got himself into that second. Paul Hurry's right back in fifth. So, currently on a maximum, Paul Hurry goes up the inside of Andrew Whitaker. Tony Atkins battling away. He gets himself in front now. That third ahead of Luke Clifton and Andrew Whitaker's in fifth. Paul Harry goes up the inside. He's going to go up the inside, Tom Perry, but Perry's got enough to hold him at bay. Now Paul Harry goes past Tom Perry. So a brilliant couple of laps of racing here in the 350s. It's Tony Atkin who leads, though. Paul Harry will be able to go back into this top corner. Two up. Tony Atkin and Paul Harry. Plenty of times we've seen. Tony Atkin and Paul Hurry passing it out. 
in the 500 course. Atkins gone wide, well. he's gone very wide, and Paul Hoy's got very close to him. Turn to Atkins, Herbie Murray, he's on the back turn. Atkins is going to be close, Paul Hoy's drive to the inside. They are very close to the inside. Absolutely neck and neck. Fantastic racing from Paul Hurry and Tony Atkin. Absolutely sensational stuff from the pair of them. Brilliant finish between the two. I'm going to wait for Emma and Claire to tell me who what did the winning there. Fabulous 350 racing. I'm sure you all agree. Race of the day so far. Absolutely tremendous action from the 350s. And let's hear that result. So the results of a brilliant race 33. It was a win for number 86, Paul Hurry. Second place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Third place, number 1, Tom Perry. Fourth place, number 51, Luke Clifton. Fifth place, number 17, Andrew Witt. Number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. And the time, the fastest time of the day so far, 118.78. 118.78, the fastest that we've seen here this afternoon. So, brilliant racing in race 33. What are we going to see in race 34? They are already on the start line. Paul Cooper, of course, has had two wins out of two so far. He comes out of gate number four in this one. So, race 34 on the line. And our start marshal, Mr. Graham Arnold, just making sure they are already. Start away, they go, and it is Paul Cooper that makes an excellent start. Dave Mears is going to be well. Problems for Barry Powell out the back, but Paul Cooper looking good once again. He leads the way here. Dave Mears has settled nicely into that second, and Mike Peters is now trying to establish himself in that third place. Although Luke Tucker's gone wide and gone round the outside. Of him. Paul Cooper looking good in this one, wants to defend his 350 title. He's already won it twice, along with three 250 wins as well, so he's a five-time Paul Cooper. Still action at the back, Barry Powell seems to have got things going. Definitely a problem for the rider at number 821. In the early stage of that race, he's now got himself going and he's going to quickly overtake Luke Tuck, although he's caught up with him very quickly as they come past us. Now Barry Powell gets to go in third place. So, round the turn for the final time as he goes past Marcus Clutch. He's down on the top. He's going to take the win and see how he's finishes in second. Third place will be Barry Powell. Luke Tuck finishes fourth. So the results of race 34. It was a win for number 11, Paul Cooper. Second place, number 19, Dave Mears. Third place, number 821, Barry Powell. Fourth place, number 89, Luke Tuck. Fifth place, number 37, Mike Peters. Sixth place, number four, Steve Tideswell. And seventh place, completing three quarters race distance there, number 176, Marcus Crutchington. The winning time, 122.66, 122.66. So that completes the ride for the 350 solos. So race 35, we go back to the right-hand sidecar support class for this afternoon. We've seen some good racing here. Sponsored by Bandit Racewear, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch managed to win their second ride. We're not expecting to see Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards, who I think has pulled out. We've got Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. And Will Offen and Ricky Pay. We didn't see Clint Blondell earlier on either, so it doesn't look like Clint's coming out again in this one. But Andrew Minard and Michelle Minard are taking up their place in gate number six. So Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, they had a great win early on in the meeting, and then they were finished second to Mark Cosser in their second ride.
So here we go then, with race number 35, a great start there from Terry Saunders and Liam Brown. Michael Austin and Will Offen get there together for that second and third, it's Michael Austin that pushes his way through, Will Offen switches back up the inside, Michael Austin's getting a lot of that dust. <laughs> Good first turn. But Terry Saunders and Liam Brown, they've really got away here. They seem to be very, very quick off the start. Terry Saunders and Liam Brown, you can see there's not much weight on that machine, and I think it just gates so, so quickly. So, once again, the riders spreading themselves out here. Looking good, looking to get used to that new front end on that machine. In second place. So we saw Susan Liam Brown leading number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. In that third place, 19. Andrew and Michelle Minard out the back at the moment. Come round for the final time. They will take the win. Another win for outfit number 24, Terry Saunders in the end. Stop for the Ricky Pay second. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch third. And it will be Andrew and Michelle Minard who will proclaim fourth place. So the results of race 35, sponsored by Bandit Racewear. It was a win for number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Second place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Third place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. And fourth place, number 19, Andrew and Michelle Minard. 132.53 was the winning time, 132.53. Race 36 then is the next one out onto the circuit, the right-hand sidecar, sponsored by British Event Catering. And we've got uh, Dale and Jordan Fish, or we should have Dale and Jordan Fish, but I can't see them on the circuit, so problems, I think, for that crew. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell are there. Ryan Partridge and Kevin Jones, not Josh Russell, Kevin Jones are over there. We've got no Robbie Simmons and Ryan Barker and it doesn't look like we've got their replacements, Kieran Newman in this one either. Mark Cossa and Wayne Rickards are there in gate five and there's no Paul Whitelam either so it's a bit of a depleted field in this one. So tapes up away they go and it is Mark Cossa and Wayne Rickards that make a fabulous start. They lead into the turn. Neil Owen is in that second and Ryan Partridge bringing up the rear, so Mark Cossa and Wayne Rickard. Uh, always, always are, it's hardly ever that Mark Cossa gets beaten anywhere in the country. and Wayne Rickards are absolutely in a class of their own. They take the win, 37, 12 will be second, and 5-1-4 will be third. If you can hear us up in the pits, could 
Paul Hurry and Paul Cooper. Could Paul Hurry and Paul Cooper make their way down to the PA van, please? Paul Hurry and Paul Cooper, can you just make your way down here, please? If you can hear us, or if you can hear us, can you let them know? Thank you. So the results of race 36. It was a win for number 37, Mark Cossa and Wayne Rickards. Second place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Third place, number 514, Brian Partridge and Kevin Jones. 1 minute 30.37 was the winning time. 1 minute 30.37. So, leg four of the 500cc sidecars. And this race 37, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. A very important leg four, of course. The top two after these two races will be the two riders nominated for the European sidecar final. So at the moment, I've been handed the points, and at the moment, at the, in first, is Mitch Godden and Paul Smith on 19 points, and second at the moment is Josh Goodman and Liam Brown on 17 points. So as it stands at the moment, Josh and Liam, outfit number three, Mitch and Paul, outfit number nine, they would be going to the European final in 2023, this is. So next year. And then third, fourth, and usually fifth as well, we'll go to the semi-final at the moment. That's number 77, Sean Hughes, in third at the moment, on countback as well. James Hogg is fourth, at, uh, sorry, Dan Berwick is fourth at the moment, but James Hogg is fifth. So those are the riders currently occupying those European qualification spots. After these two races, it will be confirmed wherever they are after this, and then they can all concentrate on the British Championships. So we'll see what happens here. Very crucial these last two races. That's a problem on the line for Richard Jenner and Michael Chittenden. For that pairing in gate two. So we have got a red flag and everybody is stopping. Let's hope that both rider and passenger are okay. of race 37 and it is Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith. Second place and Sean Hughes once again slow off the start but they are incredibly quick once they get going and Dan Berwick is going to have his work out here to keep Sean Hughes behind him. So Mitch Goddard and Paul Smith already won twice the course and now... go into that second place and that will pile on the pressure for Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown in this next race because Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett with this second place would end up with 22 points <laughs> FIME European Sidecar Final he's only got one more lap to go And he's got the uh, 2022 European Sidecar Final coming up as well, so he'll, he'll like to be able to go into that very final. And he will certainly do that with this heat win here as he comes down again. He'll take the win. So, seven points to them. They will finish the fourth leg as the highest point scorer, so they will be featuring in the European Final.
in 2023. So congratulations to them. So the results of race 37. It was a win for number nine, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Second place, number 77, Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. Third place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. And fourth place, number 13, Rachel Cox and Scott Guttridge. The winning time, 1 minute 22.18. 1 minute 22.18. So, race 38 here. And Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown, who are currently on 17 points. They will need to score. They will need to come second or higher here to confirm their place in the European final. So, race 38, sponsored by Bake My Day, Headcorn. We have got no Simon Beard and we've got no Natasha Bartlett, but we do seem to have the other four outfits over there. So, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown here, second or first, we'll get them into the European final. Third or lower, then it will put Sean Hughes into the European final. So, big stakes here in this race. Away we go, somebody lifts violently on the start, gets the bike down, pleased to see that. But it is Josh Goodwin. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown ahead then, doing exactly what they need to do to see their way safely into that European final. Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb, well placed here in that second place ahead of James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. So this will not do them any harm at all in that second place. Currently lying sixth overall, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. And Liam Brown looking comfortable here, looking very good. Jordan Smith is in that fourth place. But at the front, Josh Goodwin. Second highest point scorers. And there's problems for James Hogg in the middle of that turn. It looks like a back wheel puncture or something gone wrong on the machine of James Hogg. So that is devastating for outfit number 73. He comes across the track. And it definitely looks like a puncture. The bumps. So that's a real shame. You want to take the points, so if you can. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown take the win. Second place to number 92, Paul Whitler and Richard Webb. Jordan Smith and Joe Page finishing third. And James Hogg and Scott Guttridge will make their way round to collect that fourth spot. And that could be very, very important for them going forward. So, race 38. Sponsored by Bake My Day Head Corn. We just saw that uh, James Hogg has made his way back to the pit, so won't be taking that fourth spot. But it was a win for number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Second place, number 92, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. And third place, number 842, Jordan Smith and Joe Page. 125.72 is the winning time. 125.72. And that means that we can confirm that our European finalists as nominated by the ACU, should they wish to take up those places, will be Mitch Godden and Paul Smith and Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. And the European semi-finalists for 2023 will be chosen from 3rd, 4th, 5th and possibly 6th as well. It all depends on the nominations from the other federations. So left-hand sidecar action again, sponsored by Clive Salmon and Race 39 is the fourth leg of the left-hand sidecars. After these two races, it will just be the final left, and we have got Rob Heath and Kyle Fish off of gate one, who have been very, very quick so far this afternoon. Three wins out of three. Martin Cuff and Colin Clark, they've been quick, but not been starting well. Danny Hill, of course, passengered by Kieran Ivey. They've had some good rides as well there in amongst it. Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge have had a win in two seconds as well. Tommy Penfold and William Naden in gate five, and I don't think we're expecting to see Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds sadly off of gate six. So, 
some very quick left hand sidecar outfits here, all wanting points, all wanting to keep the pressure on, all wanting to be in the top shift. Take the pass away, they go and once again Rob Heath and Kyle Fish make a good start off the inside, but it's Tommy Penfold. It's Tommy Penfold who leads. Josh Penfold's followed them in in that third place. So Tommy Penfold and William Naden looking good here. They're all together coming off the turn. Rob Heath is in that second. Josh Penfold in that third place. Danny Hill currently fourth. So, Josh Penfold getting very close to Rob Heath, but this is the first time that we've seen Rob Heath. Oh, and it is the former British champion that is doing the beating at the moment. Josh Penfold looks very quick in that third place at the moment. And Martin Cuff out the back at the moment in this one as well. So. Tommy Penfold and William Naden, perhaps they've been just keeping something back for the later stages of this season. Although, as I say, that was very close to the second place. I think Tommy Penfold just drifted wide on the back straight. He's allowed Rob Heath back on terms. He's got a beautifully tight line coming off this turn. One more lap to go then. Tommy Penfold, will he be able to hold Rob Heath at bay for another lap? And it looks like he will because Rob Heath is going to stop. Rob Heath is stopping on the back of What a shame for Rob Heath and Kyle Fish as they slow down coming into that turn. Tommy Penfold takes the win. Josh Penfold finishes second. Great race for John Morris Racing. Third place to Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey. Martin Cuff fourth and Rob Heath will trail round for that fifth place. So the results of race 39, the left-hand sidecars. It was a win for number 96, Tommy Penfold and William Naden. Second place, number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Third place, number 124, Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey. Fourth place, number 128, Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. And fifth place, number 18, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. And the winning time, 136.06, 136.06. So we now look to race 40, sponsored by Sweet Treats, the last of the qualifying rides. And we have got Steve North and Steve North Jr. Oh, it looks like a false start for race 40. Somebody was touching the tapes. Yeah, obviously problems over there on the start, which are being sorted out right now. And I don't believe we had Billy Penfold and Richard Webb in that race. We had uh, Paul Hurry and Paul Cooper joining us then. We did have a ballot for the 350 solos because they both won all three of their races. The way that the semi-finals are chosen, which could be crucial of course, we had to uh, toss a coin and uh, I can tell you that uh, Paul Cooper won the toss, so he got the choice of which semi-final to go in. Three riders only. Into that first turn. Michael Phillips is there right on his shoulder though. Steve North a little bit further back in third. Michael Phillips going around the outside of Alex Bauman. Bauman hits a little bit of drive. In fact, he stopped as he comes out of that turn. So another problem. The chain has gone on the machine of Alex Bauman. And that's a huge ch shame. I could see the chain hanging off the machine. Absolute disaster for the reigning champions. They've had a disaster day trying to defend their title. So we're going to have to do And this should be nice and straightforward here for Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips.
Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips, they will certainly welcome this one. A nice straightforward ride for them before they hit the finals. We will give you the semi-finalists for the solo competitions and the finalists as well. So, before you go off and get yourself tested, we will get those out to you as well. There is a win for number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. And number 193, Steve North and Steve North Jr. picking up a very welcome second place as well there. So I'm sure many of you would have lap scored that one yourself. A win for number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. And second place to number 193, Steve North and Steve North Jr. 139.16 was the winning time. 139.16. So Josh Goodwin not yet coming to line. Obviously he's chosen the gate. I can see that Liam has stood there ready. It looks like Mitch Godden has gone right on the outside for this one. I think that Liam looks like he stood on gate 5. So... Right on the outside will be Mitch Godden and Paul Smith and Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Paul White and Richard Webb are going on the inside, so we can assume from that that the favoured place to be is on the outside of the circuit, going down towards that first turn. Louis Bennett in the middle. So the nerves must be jangling here. Whoever finishes this race in front will be the British champion for 2022. High stakes here at the Sandhurst Bridge Raceway. The last one to line here, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. So the start mark is ready to take the up. Away they go. It's an start. Mitch Gordon has got away well on the outside. Short of Turn. Sean Hughes has gone in after him on the outside. Round well, they come around this turn, Mitch Gordon's gone very, very wide. Sean Hughes has tried to tuck up the inside. Sam Lowe has got himself into that third place ahead of Paul Whiteham in fourth. So, Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith currently lead as the flags have gone out. There's a problem. Sean Hughes seems to have been flags are out and we will have to stop this race. So, what a shame that was. Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett really well placed there. Going into the second lap. But obviously problems going into that turn. And of course, for Mitch Godden and Paul Smith, they have to repeat what they'd already done. They've done the hard work. They've got themselves out the start. They led the way. And now they've got to try and repeat that as... High concentration to make sure that they can maintain that here. So here they go again, back onto the line for this Tower of CC sidecar final. The rerun of the sidecar final. Once again, I can see that Ian Brown is inspecting that gate carefully. So Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown come into line. Start mark is ready. Heads go out, away they go. And once again from gate six, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith have made an excellent start. Second place this time. Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins are in third and Paul Whiteland's in that fourth place. So Mitch Godden this time. He knows it's slippery coming out of this turn. He does run wide. But it is Mitch Goddard who leads this British final ahead of Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Dan Barrett's bobbing away on the inside in that third place. Ahead of Paul White, number Richard Redden. Oh, he won't want him to pull away too much. He knows Mitch was wide coming off this turn, but he seems much tighter this time. Two more laps to go here. So, back up the bank in there, Mitch Goodwin and Paul Smith, looking good here, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. The last lap flag has been made ready. Hang on. Two 
Congratulations and looking forward to hearing the thoughts of these riders on the podium after the meeting. Commiserations to Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Second place, though, is a brilliant result for them and they are into that European final, of course, for 2023. But our champions, as they come past us, a successful defence, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. So the official results of race 45, the 500cc sidecar final. It was a win for number nine, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Second place, number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Third place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. Fourth place, number 842, Jordan Smith and Joe Page. And fifth place, number 92, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. And the winning time, 1 minute 23.47. 1 minute 23.47. So the first of our British champions have been decided. We now turn our attention to the left-hand side cars. And we have got the 2019 champion, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish, coming to line. We've got Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge, number 16. They've never won this title before. Number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. Number 96, Tommy Penfold. And William Naden. Five times British champion, Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. And Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey off the outside. What an open lineup this is. Pete, Rob, Heath and Kyle Fish have been great this afternoon. Can they do it in this final? They've had the final wrapped up before and things have gone wrong surely it's their turn this time but there are five very capable outfits out there with them who will be doing everything they can to win this British Championship so the last two come into line on the inside Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey Tommy Penfold and William Naden correcting themselves there in the middle of the circuit Rob Heath has decided to go on that gate six as well, the same place that Mitch Gordon came from in the previous race. So here we go, we the left hand side car through the final, picks up, away they go, and there's a problem for one of the outfits getting off the line, but Bobby takes off. Maybe even the first turn. Five of them get together as we go to this turn, it's incredibly close in that first turn. Tommy Penfold leads, Michael Phillips is going right round the outside of all of them. He loses a bit of drive as he comes past us, but it's Tommy Penfold ahead of Michael Phillips. Danny Hill slotted into that third place, and it's Rob Heath in fourth. So, Tommy Penfold and William Nathan doing exactly what they need to do at the right time. And Michael Phillips, he's got past, he's up the inside. 
Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips sent it up the inside of Tommy Penfold and they now lead this final ahead of Tommy Penfold and William Nathan. Danny Hill is fighting over that third place with Rod Heath in fourth. So Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips, what a ride this is. Tremendous speed from this outfit as they come up that back straight. Tommy Penfold. Well, the last lap flag being made ready, he's got one more lap to hang on here, Michael and Tim Phillips, as they come round this turn. Tommy Penfold has got much, much closer to them as they come past us. There's a problem at the back for Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. It looks like Colin's come away from the machine and the red flags have come out at this stage. The red flags are out. We have to stop. Been an incident, so all the riders come to a stop. So problems with Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. So we're all checking the notes here and seeing what went on, but uh, from what we can see, there were there was three quarters race distance covered. So we will get confirmation from the clerk of the course, and we do get confirmation from the clerk of the course. And I can tell you that the result will be declared after the three laps. So we have got a new British champion in the form of Michael Phillips and his passenger Tim Phillips. So congratulations to them. A superb ride from Michael and Tim Phillips to win the British title. They will be the 2022 British champions. So give these riders a round of applause. We've just been talking this morning, the left-hand sidecar racing this season has been absolutely brilliant and today was absolutely no exception. There's been some tremendous racing in this class. A great final. Tommy Penfold and Will Naden looked like they had it in their back pocket. But Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips are the British champions. A brilliant ride from them to take their first British title. They are absolutely delighted with what they've done. And they deserve all of our congratulations. Our thoughts are with Martin and Colin. Down on this turn, they both look like they're up. And Colin is being checked over. But give your congratulations to these left-hand sidecar riders. And in particular, your new 2022 British champions, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. So here are our British champions then, Michael and Tim Phillips. Tremendous race from them. That is why we love these winner-take-all finals. Anyone can win the British title in that final. The official result then after the three laps of the left-hand sidecar final, it was a win for number 98, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. Second place, number 96, Tommy Penfold and Will Naden. Third place, number 124, Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey. Fourth place, number 18, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. And fifth place, number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. But there is no winning time because the result stood after the three laps, the three quarters race distance.
So, we move on to our penultimate race, where we will find out who the 2022 British 250 solo champion will be. So, Henry Atkins has already got himself to the line. Rob Mears is over there as well, and Jake Mulford joins them. There's one over there. So the 250 solo final race 47, the first to the finish line will be the British champion, will it be Henry Atkins again, this will be his fourth title, will it be Rob Mir, will it be Jake Mulford defending his title from 2021, will it be Cameron Taylor, David Knowles, Luke Harris, Ben Ilsley or Graham Thomas, there is a lot of former champions in amongst that. There's a lot of very quick riders as well. Here we go then, the 250 solo final. They start and away they go, and it's a very even start. Graham Thomas has made a good start on the inside. Graham Thomas leads into the first turn, but Henry Atkins comes sweeping round the outside. And it's Henry Atkins who now leads, Graham Thomas is in that second. Cameron Taylor's come very, very wide off this turn. So, Henry Atkins leads, Graham Thomas and David Knowles has got into that third place. Luke Harris has got into fourth, so the first place. Henry Atkins has got into the second place. Luke Harris has got into the third place. Henry Atkins 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 has got into the third place. Henry that third place. David Knowles is working hard to get himself back in the fourth. One more lap for Henry Atkins. Look at this ride from Graham Thomas. Will he keep Jake Mulford at bay here? As he goes into the late stages of this race. It's a tremendous ride from Graham Thomas. Now the Graham Thomas is working on the power now. That back stick. But the second race has been a tremendous battle and it's Jake Mulford who gets second. Graham Thomas clings on to that third. Cameron Taylor fourth. David Knowles fifth. Luke Harris fifth. Rob Mayer seventh. And we've got Ben Ilsley out there somewhere in eighth as well. But a brilliant performance by Henry Atkins. He's come back here for the 2022 championships. Having won it three times previously, he's now a four times British 250 champion. His name goes down in the history books once again. So give them a round of applause as they come round. Some tremendous racing from all of our riders here. A brilliant result for Graham Thomas to finish on the podium. Jake Mulford had to work very hard for that second. But our British champion for 2022, once again the British champion, number 29, Henry Atkins. Give him a round of applause as he comes round. A great ride by Henry Atkins. So Henry Atkins still making his way round. He's been absolutely peerless this afternoon. Three rides and three wins and then a tremendous ride in the final. When some of the other favourites missed the start, Henry Atkins was there. He made a great start and he won the final convincingly. And he can now head back to Devon with the British Championships in his back pocket once again. 
Congratulations to Henry Atkins. So the official results of race 47, the 250 solos. It was a win for number 29, Henry Atkins. Second place, number 72, Jake Mulford. Third place, number 314, Graham Thomas. Fourth place, number 101, Cameron Taylor. Fifth place, number 64, David Knowles. Sixth place, number 26, Luke Harris. Seventh place, number 500, Rob Meir. And eighth place, number 8, Ben Ilsley. And the winning time, 1 minute 19.22. 1 minute 19.22. So with Paul Cooper coming out onto the circuit without his helmet, I uh, do fear that that means that we're not going to see this 350 solo final, I'm afraid. So our British champion for the 350 solos is number 11, Paul Cooper. If you, before you go home, if you don't mind loosening some ropes for us and loosening some stakes, don't take the stakes out of the ground, but if you can just take the ropes out, loosen some of the stakes, and that will make the job of packing away much easier. Right, after a bit of a delay, we are here for the British Championship presentation. There's been various conversations going on with such a prestigious uh, title. Uh, lots of different things being checked, but we think we've got results uh, that we want. It's always a shame when the racing finishes. We knew we were up against it today with the heat. It's obviously been very well documented by everyone. So, uh, first of all, can we just congratulate the club on managing to get through quite so many races that they did? Big well done to the Brindling Club once again, putting on a great class track meeting. And can I invite to the uh, podium, please, somebody that's been on a British Championship podium several times themselves, two times winner of the 250cc Solo Champions Championship, Lee Street. So good to see you, Lee, back here in Britain. And, uh, I don't know if you were living in Oz, but uh, I know you went off to Oz and that was the end of your racing, wasn't it? But great to see you here. Yeah, no, um, yeah, living in Australia and loving it. And um, just want to get back and see a grass track. Um, hasn't disappointed. Great stuff. It's great to see you. And obviously, I bet you would have loved to have been out there, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Those days are gone. Well, Lee's going to present the trophy, so that's great to have him up here. And we're going to start with our, uh, I think we'll start with the right-hand sidecars for a change, shall we? Was that? Oh, yeah, right-hand sidecars. So, uh, over three heats today, but in third place, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. And second place in the right-hand side cars, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. And the winners of the right-hand side cars, um, we had a couple of passengers, but I think we'll go with the one he ended up with, Mark Cossar and Wayne Rickards.
Stay out the way of the photos. Neil, another good day, another podium as well. You've made a lot of podiums this year and the Masters in a couple of weeks. You must be uh, looking forward to that one now. Well, yeah, you know, uh, we've had a, a few meetings that we hadn't uh, managed to get to, but this is an important meeting to get two weeks now off the Masters, a bit of shake down and all that. But, yeah, good result. Uh, still things to uh, try to catch up with these boys, but uh, good results all around. Great result, and Jason obviously uh, got a bit choppy towards the end, but enjoying the track here. That's how they've moved it, I loved it, but I didn't enjoy it here before, to be honest with you. So I had a few tumbles here, as everybody knows. Um, just want to point out that I'm in a race kit. Let down there. Just to make everyone aware. Yeah, we've as, as noted, noted he's yeah, got his flip flops on. But uh, over here to Terry, and uh, you've made a lot of podiums this year as well, and you must be really looking forward to that Masters in a couple of weeks now. Yeah, definitely looking forward to the Masters. Obviously, that's the one where it counts, really. But yeah, it's doing these meetings and just going out and enjoying myself, and yeah, everything else is just going good. So. Your second ride, of course, you managed to get across the front of Mark and uh, led it for a lap or two, but then he came flying past. Yeah, I've got a rig side. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's what I like. Yeah, obviously Mark's obviously there, he's, he's the one you've got to beat, so, yeah, sort of be in front of him for, yeah, one lap. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good, so, yeah, looking forward to a couple of weeks. Great stuff, and Liam, I might talk to you later, actually, Liam, because you're back up here in a minute. Get fed up talking to you all the time. <laughs> Mark! Uh, well, what can I say? Another win? Uh, well, the passenger was different this time. What's going on there? Oh, uh, Gaz is um, gastroenteritis, so he did practice and couldn't do it. So I talked to him during the first race, and then when Tom pulled out, he was waiting. So, yeah, good time right there. And everything all right with Tom? Yeah, he's all right. He just fell off, fell off his uh, trap bike at Donington and hurt his hip, so struggling a little bit. And Wayne, you, uh, you can't keep a good passenger down. Yeah, that's why mate. So. And, uh, yeah, sorry, I nearly nearly fell over my own lead then. Uh, obviously, fun to ride on the back of Mark. Bit of scouting for a couple of weeks' time as well, just seeing how he rides the bike and seeing if he can scout for the Masters. Yeah, mate, just get some tips off of it, really. Um, uh, me and Tom struggle with getting in, so that's what I was trying to work with, really. Great stuff. Well, it's our top three for the right-hand sidecars. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell, Terry Saunders and Ian Brown, and our winners, Mark Crosser and Wayne Rickards. So we now move to our British Championships uh, events, the 250s, 350s, part of the side car and the left hand side car. First of all we're going to go with the uh, 250 solos, some brilliant racing, some very, very talented riders in this class and great to see such a mix of motocross engines and jowers and all the rest of the different things happening. It really is a unique class. And I'm sure that uh, Lee enjoyed watching some of those riders as well that he used to race against going round. One in particular that I do know he raced against ended up coming third, Graham Thomas! Yeah, boy! Yeah. 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 Graham! Yeah. Well done, mate. Yeah. Bloody yeah. legend you and he did his best to hold all the youngsters back, but two youngsters in particular were just too fast this time. Second place this time round, Jake Mumford! And our 2022 British champion, he's won it three times before. This is his fourth title, Henry Atkins!
myself just now. I thought I was going to catch fire. Was he? <laughs> 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 So I do definitely want to have a chat with Graham because, uh, Graham, that was a great ride. I thought for a minute you were going to win it. It was, uh, yeah, rolling back the years. Yeah, I'm over the moon with that result. Didn't expect it really as with the field we had in that final. I, well, I was just hoping for a good start and I pulled it off. So, yeah. A great start, great result. But, of course, back in the day when you won your two titles, they were all on similar sort of two-stroke bikes. And now you've got all these youngsters that race league speedway. It's really tough. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to keep with them, to be fair. They've got a lot more corner speed than what I have, so... But no, I kind of did, did roll back the years today, so, yeah, good result. Incredible result, Graham. Absolutely incredible. So, Jake, obviously defending your title, probably a bit disappointed that you didn't quite manage it, but uh, that final was tough. Yeah, it was really tough, the final. I mean, everyone, anyone in that really could have won it, and... Henry was flying all day, and yeah, it is a shame that I messed up the start, but it's what it is, and I've, yeah, I still, still rode well, I think, so yeah, it's really good, thank you. And then obviously for the rest of the year, obviously you've got the Masters coming up, and a few more big meetings as well to look forward to, the, uh, the big European final as well, a uh, big season so far, and a big one to come. Yeah, yeah, I've got the European final at the end of the year, I think, and I think next weekend, or the one after, is the Masters, so yeah, I've got a few lined up, so... Hopefully it'll all go well. Great stuff, Jake. And uh, I'm going to come up there with you because it's a long way up there. Henry, well, I remember having a conversation with you at Plymouth and just saying, you know the 250 title's coming up and you're eligible. And you said, oh, I'll try and get the bike ready. I bet you're glad you did. Yeah, no, um, first I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Andrew Appleton. I sent my bike off to him during the winter and um, got a whole new frame and he serviced my engine and, yeah, rides him in. It's, as you can tell, it just pulls everywhere and it's just such a nice bike to ride. But no, fair play to all the field today. It was um, looking at the lineup, I thought, oh, this could be tough. And um, no, it was on that start line in the final, I was a little bit. And um, I knew I had to make the start, and hopefully, well, I did. But it was still having Jake next to you, and then you had all the other boys next to you. It's just. Bit of, a, bit of a scary one. Yeah, that second ride, I mean, we saw that second ride with Rob Mir. I mean, you rode him real hard for the first turn. I don't even know if you could see him. I'd imagine he probably did. Yeah, I, I, I remember I was off gate two and he was next to me. And um, we both got to the bend at the same. I thought, oh, I better turn it here. But the bike just didn't want to turn. It just kept on driving and driving and driving. And I remember I came in and he was like, hey, I couldn't turn either. So I was like, yeah, fair play then. So, um, but no, it was good just to sort of like Rob coming back and um, riding against him. I knew it was going to be tough after I saw his first year. I thought, oh, E2 is going to be a bit tasty. And it was. So um, look, fair play to all the boys. They rode really well. And um, obviously with the track staff too, fair play. Trying to keep the dust down. Obviously, they got the better of us. But especially on a hot day like this, it's, it's so hard to try and get the track in mint condition. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Henry, obviously great to see you back at home on the grass. Uh, we're going to be seeing a bit more of you. I know that the speedway's been up and down, but uh, we absolutely love you being on the grass. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I went away with Andrew a couple of weeks ago over in Germany and watched him race, so it's just giving me a bit more um, enthusiasm to come back to the grass and try try 500 now. Great stuff. Well, congratulations for today. So our third, second and first, Graham Thomas, Jake Mumford and our champion, Henny Atkins. Tash off though since he used to race him, so that's took 10 years off him. <laughs> so the 350 solos, and uh, we've got a bit of a mix in the first place, we'll get to that in a minute, but third place today, I tell you what, that podium is for some, uh, it's got some experience on it today, Dave Mears! It's like you've never heard of Amy! <laughs> So we had 
had some brilliant 350 racing all afternoon and I'm sure you agree that we had both Paul Cooper and Paul Hurry riding absolutely sensationally. Paul Hurry's race in that one where he had to come from the back was absolutely outstanding. Paul Cooper's been fabulous in his defence of his title. The only fair way to decide this is to choose that we have joint champions for 2022. So can I introduce to the stage our joint 2022 champions, Paul Hurry and Paul Cooper! So Dave, <laughs> when are you going to slow down? You know, the British number three again. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that today, just to be quite honest. Yeah, I didn't expect it, but I keep trying. So yeah, good. Great stuff, and obviously it's a circuit you know so well, so you were able to put the bike probably where you wanted it, and that, uh, when others were making mistakes, I think you were able to just plug away. Well, I don't know about that. It's um, the biggest I've ever seen for it. I mean, fair play to the club. They've done well. Um, but it, it did chop up towards the end. But same for everyone. It's probably just both ways. So I suppose the experience does help. Get out in the gate and go. Get out in the gate and go. Absolutely. Sorry about that. So, yeah, well done, Dave. Great job. And our joint champions are going to come up here. So, I don't know where to start, really. <laughs> Paul Hurry, first of all. Obviously, I mean, your third ride was brilliant. Absolutely superb. There's five or six of you in the corner together. Definitely the toughest one to win your title today. <laughs> yeah, good job I've done that. Yeah, no, it's, it was hard. I, I, I used Mark Giles' bike, Roger Maynard's, and the seat was a little bit slippery. And every time I dropped the clutch, it shot me towards the back of the bike. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I'd make very good starts. But, yeah, no excuses. It's, it's about racing. And we go out there and have a go. Absolutely, you certainly did that, and obviously uh, it's a title that you've gone for a few times. You've won it before, of course, and gone through, through, uh, gone for it a few times. And today, obviously, not a completely satisfactory end of the day, but great to be up here anyway. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be up on the rostrum, and it's probably going to be my last year as well. So, yeah, it's nice just to finish that one like that. Yeah, that's a real shame, Paul. And uh, other Paul Coops, come over to you and uh, joint champion. But uh, yeah, fair honour to be joint champion with a man like Paul Hurry. No, it's not. <laughs> I want to win. Um, it, it, was, it was great racing out there. The guys at the club did a really good job to put the track on. The track was great. We've had great weather, and that's unfortunately caused the dust. Um, Adrian made the right call to decide not to run the final. But thank you guys for staying and seeing this presentation. And, yeah, it, it was great to race out there today. I had a good time. The bike was working really well. I uh, had some good help from my dad and from Steve in the, um, in the pits. Uh, good sport man here and some of my sponsors, Bridget and people that are here as well, have come all the way down from Yorkshire. So yeah, it was, it was good to be out there winning, but uh, sharing the sharing first place with Paul's not too bad, is it? <laughs> not bad at all. Perhaps you can have a runoff, uh, I don't know, Pickering or something like that maybe. Definitely. Pickering, yeah, we can do that. Although before the Masters. Maybe one at Pickering and one at Swingfield and then one somewhere else at the Cornwall meeting maybe for a, who knows. Maybe not Cornwall, it's a long way from York. <laughs> yeah, but it's near where I live, so... <laughs> right, our top three. Dave Mears in third and our joint champions, Paul Hurry and Paul Cooper. <laughs> Tell you what, there's a few laps between you three. So, on to the sidecar classes. And we will start with the left-hand sidecars. Third place. Overall, this is a rider that is really going places in this class. Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey! Uh, 
And second place in the left-hand sidecar class, Tommy Penfold and William Naden. <laughs> and our left hand sidecar champions for 2022, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. <laughs> So, Danny, uh, different passenger, but a uh, great result today. Obviously, you've not been doing this long, but uh, I know you've been on the back, but uh, a great result, third place in the Brits. Yeah, mate, we've done well today. Fair play to kids. They noticed he jumped on and he done me a big favour today. He certainly did, and uh, obviously this is uh, what probably your best result to date, I'd have thought. It is, yeah, I've got a full flash here, and I was aiming for a podium, so now I've got a podium over the moment. Great stuff, and Kiss, you're going the wrong way, man. What are you doing? Oh, mate, I felt ill halfway through. <laughs> it's not right, I felt dizzy, sick. <laughs> but no, I took Harry's place to see Brian being Zandy, but we'll send him a few photos in a minute, he'll be a bit upset. <laughs> he certainly will, and uh, yeah, we'll go over to our second place crew, who led the final for a while, you're a long way up, led the final for a while, Tommy, and uh, yeah, it looked like you had it in your back pocket for a minute. Don't have to rub it in. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was getting a bit knackered. I'm fat and ugly now. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done to these boys. It's hard day. Hot weather as well. Um, thanks to John anyway for doing the bikes. Yeah, great. And uh, what's he having Josh in that final as well? Oh, he's still in it. Look at this. Don't want that. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. And we'll obviously, uh, yeah, you've had a couple of good results in the last couple of years. Perhaps been struggling a bit this year, but great to be back on it today. Yeah, uh, we tried out our new bike uh, earlier in the season. We even rode it in the first seat today. Um, decided that we, we should stick to the old girl, the beast. And uh, got a couple of results. Just a shame we didn't win it in the end. But yeah, well on, well on us. Yeah, great stuff. And we'll go to those next. I don't actually know which of these is the driver and which is the passenger, actually. But, so you're the driver. So yeah, I mean, you were quick. you've always been quick and you were quicker earlier in the year. But uh, this is absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I wasn't expecting this at all. But, uh, I didn't want to do a trip. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not sure, apart from uh, obviously Alex won it last year, so it's a bit of a Welsh domination at the moment. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I should take it back to Wales. But... Here we go. Yeah, 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 great stuff. And uh, Tim, I'll bring you in as well because. Uh, you've obviously been passenger in for a little bit as well and uh, enjoying it, but this must be everything you've ever dreamed of. After 17 years of trying. 17 years, amazing. So congratulations. And uh, this is it now. You're the British champions for 2022 and you've got a season to now represent grass track in the left-hand sidecar class. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> they're speechless, they're speechless. You've got to get used to this, by the way. Great, right, our top three. We've got Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey in third. Second place, Tommy Penfold and Will Naden. But our champions, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. So on to our 500 sidecar class and first of all it's worth mentioning of course that one of the big things for this class is after those first four heats their European finalists are decided and obviously we congratulate first of all Josh and Liam and Mitch and Paul for qualifying for next year's European final. So very well done to them. So on to the British Championships and in third place I'm sure you'll be delighted with this Dan Burke and Mark Hopkins.
So in second place this year, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. And our champions successfully defending their title, Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. Yay. Hiya, guys. Me and him, we yeah, I can see he's got hold of that champagne already. That's worrying. Child on stage. <laughs> Child on stage. Who's got Stevi strips on his forehead, please? <laughs> We've both been in the ambulance. <laughs> Red smile. Cheese. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 whoa, 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 the kids got semi strip <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's done that early, but then I've, yeah, it's probably leaving that. So, Dan, on the rostrum for the uh, Brits, that's a, a good result, isn't it? That's a great result. We had a lot of trouble today with the bike, so yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant stuff, and obviously some really close racing as well, but you've had a win and a couple of really good rides, so yeah, you must be on the crest of a wave after this. Great stuff, great stuff. And Mark obviously disappointed to have lost that uh, left hand title, but a small consolation with third place. Excellent, he's absolutely caked in dust, I can see up here as well. Over to second then. So, George, first of all, everything okay? Because obviously you had that. That uh, mishap in the second running where you ran at the back of Mitch, and uh, yeah, we were a bit worried for a while. Yeah, I was a bit dazed. I'm positive I cracked the rim, so it's a bit uncomfortable, but I kind of just dug deep to get through to the final, like qualify for Europe. And I give it two good laps and I'll run out of steam. Yeah, that's a shame because obviously uh, we do enjoy watching you guys race against each other, but uh, yeah, I mean, future for the rest of the season, obviously, any big plans? No, just we got European and that's it. As you know, I'm busy with Speedway, and so that takes priority at the minute. So yeah, just European left and that uh, pretty good. Great stuff. Well, good job on the second. And Liam, obviously, I don't know how you did it in this heat, but uh, yeah, second place in the uh, right-handers and second today. So uh, probably a little bit disappointed looking at your face. Yeah, um, it's one of them. I had it in my head. I was coming here to win, and um, yeah, it's just not been our day today and there's not much you can do about it really is there? No there's not and obviously that spill in that second ride didn't help either. No that's right but as they say like just carry on to the next one, next one's bigger so let's go get that. Great stuff and uh, I mean, it's very slippery up here thanks to you Mitch but uh, yeah successful title defence so you must be pleased with everything. Yeah we, we thought it was going to be like one of those days where everything, everything goes wrong and the first race the fuel pipe come off and Welsh boys passed us and the second race well, obviously we had a bit of a problem with, with Josh from the start and just thought it was all going to go wrong today but uh, yeah, it came good in the end. So. It certainly has come good in the end because uh, obviously now you're a back-to-back -back winner and you've said on our podcast as well, you've said that people tend to go on and win a few. Well, you've now won two. No, you said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, I mean, anything could have happened today. I mean, Josh, Josh and Liam looked so fast in uh, in the first heat and in practice. The Welsh boys looked really, really good as well. And you know, it could have you know it could have been anyone's game. But um, you know, we worked hard, sort solved our problems, and no, got really in. No, yeah, great stuff. And Paul, obviously, a couple of years, well, a few years ago, now you were considering packing it all up. I'm now you're two times British champion. I know, he, he keeps telling me I can't. I keep, I've got to keep going as long as he can, so 
you know, we'll just we'll just crack on and you know we've got five, four, five, six meetings left and uh, we'll do this season and then we'll we'll see what uh, next year brings. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Well, our top three in our top three in the five hundred sidecars. We've got Dan Berrick and Mark Hopkins in third. Second place, Josh Cooper and Liam Brown, but our champions for twenty twenty two, Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. So hopefully you've enjoyed the racing here today, whether you've been connected to a ride or whether you've just been enjoying the racing. We have seen some great racing here once again at Britain. And don't forget that next weekend, Grass Trap Banter Promotions promote a trophy grass track. And then we've got the big British Masters in two weeks' time down the other end of the village. So hopefully we'll see you all there as well. But safe journeys home and we will see you soon.